man called concrete asphalt. Catching me up. And if you jump off a bed, me say you can't pass the floor. Mash down the window, you tear down the door. Jump in a bus and say you're gonna... The, the weekends have weekends, man. I mean, me gone out Friday night, come home 2 o'clock. Me gone out Saturday night, come home 2 o'clock. Me gone out Sunday night, come home 2 o'clock. No, me gone out Sunday night, I never go home. <laughs> And last night again, no, well, Monday night, me gone out again. Why oh, you love Richie Stevens celebrating him 50th birthday? Monday, me I tell you. Exciting, man. Hope Garden, Third World, Chronics, Jesse McRoyal, I mean, Steve Marley, Saturday, Bob Marley Museum again. Sunday, we're going to Mobile. Artists against violence. Big, big concert, like thousands of people. We love it. We want to yell up Mackie Conscious. And then Monday, was at Richie Stevens' house. I celebrate with him. 50th birthday, may I tell you. So, we're there with you. Yeah, uh, we're you going there with you. Yeah, you know, say this weekend again, we got on the grill. <laughs> General Trees, we got on the grill. But, yes, Rasta Fest. Herbs and all these things. Anyway, we're going to play this show now. Where's the asphalt? No, me, I'll tell you, man. Give me Dennis Brown any day with that show now. Dennis Brown any day with that show now, man. Peter Tash, trust me, you're not having to try. Leave me like more of the groups, no nursery rhyme. Ooh, God, give me the little green apple. Don't it's a touch I try man to lick a green apples this one, but I don't know to me it not work out. It not work out for me need that first slightly. I'll be that a chop yard it's not about you have to call a speed a speed when the speed is a speed. Hey, who have up to what? Who have up to what? Paul get a blow. Anyway, Willie Williams, you ride. Big tune. Brand new. Talking about the British girl is more than the Yeah, and Rock City Festival uh, of uh, Ron Williams Center. Let me I tell you, man. The man fresh. Why oh, you love you, Ryan? You know. Believe you me, you're going good. Trust me, you're going good, man. I you know, one artist from them time, the past well, years ago. Occasionally we do them kind of program, you know. We call it programs for Christians. Yes, program for Christians. We want to do a Christian program. Especially in a day, this time of the year. Yeah, we want to play a tape. Especially for my listeners who are Christians. So, don't matter... All who dip on the other side, nobody comes. Hey, what kind of thing that Muta play? Yes, all you too have to listen to these things. Forget a understanding and a grasp of where you're there and where you say where you say and why people say what them say and do what them do without even knowing the origin of these things. So we'll take you back to the origin of certain things. You understand? So why you... Uh, we can't say put your tape on cock again because no tape not about again. Maybe you can set up your computer in a way where you can record it. I wait to go up on YouTube. Why you love Duke BSC? <laughs> Why you love Duke BSC? You know? Believe you me. Duke BSC. Well, you left out the Cuba music there, Rasta. Why you love all the people them who say Muta? You see that program where you do last week? Shot. See, what? Well, my engineer and shake him head. My head dropped off, you know. You didn't, know, you didn't love the Cuban music then? Ah? Huh? You learn who leave. You learn who All right, sir. I doubt me love you the youth, them say. Learn who leave. A Romain in that studio. Romain. Okay, I get the name right this time. All me have to think about is Romain Virgo. <laughs> Remember your name. All right, so... What me I say is that, why you love all the people them who call me and text me and say, yes, Muta, 
the program about Fidel Castro and Cuba was wonderful, especially like we did that play the Cuban music them. I think it's that grab the people them, the Cuban music them over there that play. So we give thanks to that. We give thanks when we do them things there. Uh, different people respond to it. And we love the response where we get. We love the response. And you're the little engineer you would say a while ago. Yes, I love it. Okay, so tonight, as we say, we have a little program line up. Huh? And why you listen intentively to where we have to deal with. Okay, here we go. Christmas in the air, special time of year. When we share, true parade, you know, including true about ganja. We come a long way, man. You know, man, a ball out ganja festival. I tell you, it's sweet, me, see, man. It's sweet, me. It really sweet, me, boy. I tell you. Anyway, you know, so when I was a youth, I go to school. I a whole heap of books we used to have in our possession, and you know, so a whole heap of them did ban. But one of them were really. Did all a whole heap of as youth was a book named The Wretched of the Earth. Fran Fanon book, The Wretched of the Earth, was really a key book in a way we call developing way political mind. And there is this is the common and I never been was 55 years since him dead. That means uh, when I did get in tune with the book. Him the dead already. Yeah, because I know my teenager, me I read them book there. You know them where they so it's, yeah. Serious thing. Him the dead already, man. When me I go a technical. Yeah, when me I go a technical, him the dead already. Anyway, you know them having a uh, them having this screening of a film named Concerning Concerning Violence. Is it is based on finance. 1961, okay, the book was from 1961. Yeah, serious thing. The Wretched of the Earth. And this is happening at the Neville uh, Lecture Theatre, December the 9th, which is this Friday. We want to talk to Ajamo. Ajamo, you're up on the line? Yeah, man, we there. Yes, sir. Good, after, good night, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. You hear me? Yeah, man. Yeah, man, I'm hearing you. How are you doing? All right, yes. The lecturer, you're a lecturer in the Department of Caribbean Studies. Yeah, man, I'm a lecturer in the Department of Caribbean Studies, and I'm involved in organizing this event. Mm -hmm. And I really love um, how you're really free in the event um, and identify the radical nature of um, the wretched of Earth because even today, it's still influencing um, people. I think a lot of people yeah. all over the world, in, you know, even Irish nationalists, yeah. the Black Panther Party, the Tamil Liberation Movement, even essentially people looking for emancipation. Where was from? Guadalupe. Is where was Guadalupe come from? Which, which, which country? In Martinique. Martinique. Yeah, he, was born, he was born on um, July the 20th yeah. in Martinique. Yes. Uh, no, in, yeah, in Martinique. And yeah. he must leave and go to France. Yes. After, you know, after, after me, the war in 1945, mm. and go and study medicine and specialize in psychiatry. And, you know, while I'm doing studies, but it's even before that, you know, like, he had some idea in his head when he go join the Free French Forces because yeah. Germany occupied yeah. France. France, and, yeah. and Nazi Germany occupied France. So he believed himself as a Frenchman and go defend the motherland. But when he go to Europe and he see the racism of the French and the racism of other people, even Italians, and mm -hmm. he realized the way it's yeah, in the African. It was African, so yeah. It's really, yeah, so he writes a letter to his mother, you know, and father, and I tell him, so boy, if the mirror say, and they fighting the enemy, they shouldn't feel no honor because they have seen the enemy, and they know, say, and they're very racist. I think so one of the things, the them, French. I think one of the things that were, a lot of ones in a them time that was confronted with is them political ideology as it relates to classism and racism where a socialist viewpoint never really gave credence to racist philosophy it's more of a class philosophy even yeah, in a jamaica yeah, the, class thing. yeah the, communist them, the communist them the communist them in a jamaica like trevor Monroe and them man there them more mm -hmm. was class indoctrinated because they might follow a kind of communist philosophy until long after we hear Trevor Monroe say one of the things them that did confront them 
as radicals is that them never actually a deal with the racism that exists. And I think Franz Fanon disillusion going to Europe and realize eh, but this thing uh, he man of French, you know, sure. you know he, he, he man African, you know, so yes, yes. It's, it's very important. Yes. But, but you see, the thing, when Trevor uh, talk about uh, later on, he realized that um, um, in terms of the centrality of race, including class, gender, and other things, then, he mm-hmm. really, you know, he had Rodney from a long time and talk about race, so it's not like a late um, discovery. It's just that they never believe in, um, in the importance of white supremacy and culture. No, they don't see that way. Really. Um, Carl Marcus yeah. Gabbard was an escapist to them. True. Marcus Gav was an escapist to them, you know. And Marcus Gav totally licked down communism flat, flat, flat. But at the same time, Marcus Gav was an ardent supporter of capitalism. Yeah, that me say. He licked down communism. He <laughs> licked down communism. That's why a whole heap of one did see him as a, what you call a reactionary. As if, if you're right. a Trotskyite or a, or a, or a, or a, um, a, a Leninite or a, a, a Marxist, you, you yeah. wouldn't see you wouldn't see Marcus Gavi had something to, to contend with, you know, until recently, really. Right. Yeah. And, and because of the struggle that we wage, that we, we center race in our struggle for emancipation. Yeah. But at the same time, some of we center race and class and, you know, the sisters them who are revolutionary and the race question and class question also bring gender into it. Yes, because yeah. we have to bring the totality of ourselves to the struggle. We can't say, well, they deal with the race issue today and then tomorrow we deal with that because even though the Algerian struggle for liberation against French colonial colonialism, then bringing the sister them another struggle, mm. another armed struggle against um, the French colonialism. Mm. But once the sister them are going to win the struggle, gender never become a big thing anymore. They must keep the woman them out of the circle yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. on the sideline. So this city is the of the struggle. No guy can't tell you to go. Yeah, yeah. If that is oppression to the side, yeah. and when we deal with this other one, that come to most of it, then we will deal. But you know, that a, a next book that was very influential to for us level, level is black skin white mask. Yes, I don't know. Uh, another impo- and the thing about that, you know, that was a dissertation when submit, you know, for, um, as part of um, medical studies. And for, I'm rejected. For an, yeah, man, and then I'm published now fifty two. In, in um, France, so he writes he write another thesis like within a week. He mm. put another thesis together, but that then rejected and said, you know, you know, sufficient. You mean the black skin, white them. mask? Black skin, white mask. Yeah. It, was, it was his dissertation, but what, it was rejected. Okay, yeah, it was a and big it, selling book. It, it was a big bookseller. It was a big selling book, though. Yeah, man, and them still are using it today, you know. Mm. Them still are using it. You see the problem now with, um, with Fanon, and we have to rescue Fanon. Right now, them am really in prison at the university when, you know, the 60s and 70s, and at the jungle and the streets are revolutionary spaces that mm. um, him and him work occupy. But no, people are sitting on a Yale, I'm sitting at University of Toronto, mm. I'm sitting at University of West Indies, mm. and I'm just read about Fanon, but they divorce from political struggle. Struggle, yeah, you of have, course. You have, yeah, and see a people right with the papers up on the internet. Thesis, thesis. Do theoretical yeah, conversation, thesis, and interpretation, and, yeah, but terrible. Guess what? They yeah. have nothing to do with activism, nothing to do with change. No practical move. No practical move as it really is to reach it up the earth. Yeah. So they, yeah. so they really have kind of um, de-radicalized. Um, for none, because everything now is abstraction. Yeah. So you can write about for none, and when you read it, you say, "Boy, I want to read that." Who am I talking about? Understand what am I saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I when I a youth, I go at school, 15, 16 years old, and I read them books. It's like, it take all away that we gone out. They go do action, active things. You know, I'm a serious thing, active. We, we yeah. just go at technical, and I read them books, man. It make we active, man. Yeah. And yeah, for you to know, it was, um, I think when Dan Watts, he was the editor for um, Liberator magazine. And mm-hmm. I must say, you know, when during the 67 more crimes in the United States, I'm checking for you know them youth up on the road and maybe a wine on thing, but them but them quoting saying about them youth you know, they all read. Yes, they yes. read a lot. Of Not course. one of them hasn't read the Bible mm. for none. Yeah. And that's my call Richard at Earth, you know, the Bible. Bible. Yeah, man. It was America. like a Bible, man. It was like a Bible. Yeah, man. Mm. So, so for me and many other um, comrades, you know, they want to introduce Fanon to a younger generation because this semester in my class, I have you them, whenever you wrote Fanon, write the name on the board. You know, only one person. 
to myself, how can we in the, the, in the Caribbean, we are teach culture, we are yeah. teach with a development. Caribbean, with a I Caribbean scholar, with a you know, Caribbean scholar who, who, who was very, you know, like Franz Fanon, Silla, James, Padmore, all of them, man, they should be known by youth now who have studied political science as it related no, to the Caribbean. Yeah. And even the sister named Claudia Jones now, only for people who know about Claudia her, because Jones, she's a revolutionary, oh, yeah, she's man. from America, yeah, man. because of the work her. that she had done. Yeah, and yeah. when she go to Britain, the, the white communist and the British communist party, you know what to do with that because she even advanced and most of them because she was a leader in the communist party in yeah. South America. Yeah, I wrote yeah. work on theoretical issues. Even some people said, boy, they, 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 that's a day black feminism come up with the idea of race, class, and gender analysis. But as she as a pioneer. Yeah, yeah. All right, this, with, um, this, that, that approach to, to deal with um, the, the yeah. oppression of women, that working class woman, African and the woman them experience oppression now when it's a triple oppression that I'm with you know? Yeah, this event we are going this event we are going concerning violence. Tell me exactly. It said you, you said based upon as a finance Richard of the Earth. What as yes, based the, on finance um Richard of the Earth. Oh them break it down in the the, the film. Oh them break it down. Okay, what what I'm doing is I have um Lauren Hill as the narrator mm. where she the one I read were extracts from excerpts from the, the book. from the wretched of the earth. So they must show certain different struggles. We have Guinea Bissau with um Amilcar Cabral. Mm-hmm. So they have Amilcar Cabral talking. So in fact they have nine scenes. Mm-hmm. Nine, nine different um scenes. So they have Mozambique, they have Angola, um different um spaces, Algeria. And they're reading part of his the chapter concerning violence yeah. and depicting different scenes. So they even show up Radish or Zimbabwe. Yeah. And have um <coughs> so have people you know, them have white people talk about all them to freedom or all them to society and the sum total of everything is just to show the absurdity of colonialism but also mm. the necessity of violence in some cases yeah. besides um, oppression. So it's a very interesting way to introduce people to Fanon. Fanon, okay. All right, so what well, well, tell the people them that it's happening this Friday. Um, what, yes, time, what, time, what time? What time? What um, time? What time? Sorry. What time? <coughs> Never caught my losing voice. Yeah, no, let me ask you what time. It starts at 6 p.m. 6 p.m., okay, all right. 6 p.m. at the Neville Hall Lecture Theatre, that is N1. And it is a, a film about, based upon a Franz Panan book, The Wretched of the Earth, concerning right. violence. Okay. <clears throat> and and an it, important part of it you know, is to show that violence is something that exists in a new colonial society because, you know, the thing for Fanon is that colonialism is a very violent system mm. at a psychological level, at a physical level that the army and the police are used to maintain the oppressive order. And the same thing on Tribune. Yeah, yeah. So I want to point out them things, you know. Yeah, all right. All right, okay, you have to go, you have to go, we're going to drink water, Bridget. All right, we'll give thanks. Yeah. I don't want you to choke out by yourself. <laughs> I don't want you to choke out. Come on, take care now. Yeah, man, we just want to remind the people them that this is part of the, the, the Institute of Gender and Development Studies, the Institute of Caribbean Studies, the Pan-African Liberation Movement. And you and women. This is this yeah, Friday. Man, it's very important for people. If they don't have a chance to come to read up on Fanon. Go online. Mm. And, and get more information about him because he's relevant. He's very relevant. Very Caribbean. relevant. Give thanks, very Bridget. Relevant, you know? Uh, give thanks. Come on. Take care. Okay. Here we go. Out of the five, out of the five reggae artists, them, we get nominated. Three of them is not Jamaican. Yes, it's only two Jamaican album 
in a denomination. Two of them, two Jamaican in a denomination. So, we can see what happened. We can see what is happening. You have reggae Grammy Award and hardly any Jamaican in it. <laughs> That's so funny, really. This week, people them, this weekend, the people them will get to see this youth yeah. This youth here, yeah. when them just, just come out, may I tell you, man, him sound like burning spear. We don't know him voice change up to Iowa, but Dawe Congo. <laughs> Grammy have. Five people end it and it's two Jamaican act in it. Um, Sly and Rabbi, I think. Sly and Rabbi in there again. And, um, fire. <laughs> raging fire. The, one of them, one, one of them who, where's well, the first I actually see him? I actually heard the music on the boat the other day, J Bank, from Hawaii. Seems as if he's a very popular reggae artist out of Hawaii because, may I tell you, I know for why and the dead that support him. Believe you me. Anyway, him in it. Him in it. And ironically, one of the Jamaican <laughs> Jum- yeah, nominations, him also in it too. But we know, say, I'm going man, I go to the now because it's Wolipa. I know it's Wolipa albums usually go up to see who going to come out at the top five. And I know a whole heap of man down here so they set up them album. And it's not there. I, 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 well, I, mean, I don't know where I go on. I think, by the way, I think Ziggy, uh, uh, Ziggy didn't there? Ziggy in it? Eh? Ziggy Marley in it, don't it? So we are there. What we me see a while ago? Ziggy Marley. Um, Raging Fire. All right, Ziggy Marley, Raging Fire, Soldier. They have Ziggy Marley, Raging Fire, Soldier. You have... Tur- um, Sly and Robin, no, you know it? Oh, is that, is that what name there? It's a compilation that. So, oh, I just say, oh, I say a tree, a tree, a, a, oh, a two foreign night, night. Mm-hmm. two foreign band night. Okay. Uh, yeah, fresh, refresh my brains, uh, refresh my brains. Come in, I look on the paper here, so I talk from out of my head. Uh, all right, you have Soldier, which is a big act right now, especially on the California side. There, them, them are. Uh, Sell enough. Well, not enough really, but compared to where I sell now, it's enough. Compared to where I sell now, it's really enough music that. No, it weirdy. Nowadays, you sell all 10,000 CD, you sell enough CD. <laughs> you think you have an idea, because I can sell 10,000 CD, I go back to the record company about more of them lights than next album. <laughs> it's really funny. It's really funny. That man has sell 10 ton CD, I know, and it sounds like I know CD. All right, all right, all right, I get it, uh. I get where I go on here, so now. So we're raging fire there. Me not say raging fire, eh? Raging fire. Okay. Yeah. All right, all right. I see one who there night now. But this is not so, one, two, three, three, four, five, six. Six, yeah. Then all them have six no and a five them usually have. Them usually have over five, you know. Mm-hmm. Them put six in there now. Okay, I the first me see that. Sly and Rabbi present. And they have J Bang, who the Virginia is from Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Ziggy Mali, Raging Fire, Rebell- Rebell- Revolution, and Soldier. You know, Revolution and Soldier is the and the J Bang is where the people them are go for now. Especially in a California area. Yeah. So you have three far you have three foreigner and three local. We don't know if you can call Ziggy Mali local again, you know, call Ziggy Mali, don't live a job you can again at all. But make us say that three foreigner, three local. 
we don't know it about Pano, you know. You know, you know, say the tiger say Mali name in a in a and I guess a Mali name in a in a Grammy, you know. It, it's like I give him, but we don't know. We don't know yet because this year they might choose to give one of them man there, especially like Re Revolution and Soldier who are make some real serious headway across America. It's ironical, you know, that America seems to be the world when it comes on to judging people musically. People feel, say, if them album not go up on Billboard, reggae chart, it not really say nothing. And you have a bigger market there in Africa, you know. You have a market in Africa there where if you tune, sell all a million in a Nigeria, right now, reach nowhere, you know. Because you have 170 million people there, so. So you can imagine you sell a million out of that come like you in a Jamaica and sell five thousand record. And that now sell again in a Jamaica. But when I realize is that when we look upon them sales thing and them say you sell ten thousand, I like enough record that, enough C D that. When me out there a a, a tour to write it and me sell if you ever sell ten thousand vex. Yeah, because me I said that no nothing. Because a record company now go sign you again if you sell ten thousand. You have to lick 100,000 records and all them CD and all them there. Nowadays, 10,000 man gone way up there. You know, it's it amazing. Man just download everything and so now, so that you have to just go make money off of touring. If you're not tour your salt, you know what I'm saying? If you're not tour your salt, but. And Soldier and Revolution are tour enough. Yeah, them tour enough, especially from the West Coast of Africa there. Them are two enough. So, I could show that I got pan out, you know. As we are saying, six, six nomination out of maybe 50 odd nomination. <laughs> a man whispered to me the other night, and I talk, call him name. A man whispered to me the other night and said, Well, you want to see a two album? I get me gone up in the Grammy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that time, I don't know them things you go already, you know. I don't know them things you go. That, a whole heap of album go up, but them choose five in at the end. Come remember, like three of my album them go up already, you know. Mm. Yeah, man, me have three album me go up for get. Cause the record company them usually send your album there. Okay. You know, so when you when you have a record company, them usually submit your album them. The man said two albums me have up there, you know. I mean, I say, all right, Bridget. I mean, I said on team, cause me know them thing to go. Me know them thing to go, so. What, when he said to me, Sunday night, to the hour, Wednesday night, see there? Six of them, Raging Fire. We feel good for Raging Fire, though. The continent says a young band, and them really are do something different. Them really do something different. That means that somebody are listening to them music out there. The ironical thing about Sly and Robbie, no, you know, is that Sly and Robbie is always in there. <laughs> Sly and Robbie is some Grammy kids, you know. And then win the first Grammy, reggae Grammy, you know, with Black Euro. But them was always in the air. Surprisingly, I don't see Scratch. Because Scratch will have a new album this year, you know, I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it in there, but Scratch, no feel no way. When Scratch got him Grammy, put it on and eat in bed. <laughs> and because that had no santi. Every man put them Grammy on that stand. Scratch will chew Grammy and eat the bed. I don't remember saying that and eat there. You understand? But why you love Scratch? Lee Scratch Perry, man, may I tell you. Lee Scratch Perry is still a lick down the thing, you know. Still a book, pan tour, and shows and all over the place. We give thanks for that. Considering him the daddy from a longer time. We want to play this song, yeah. Before we go into the, the matter where we're at and here, we want to play this song, yeah. Here goes.
So I get a call from the cleaner when I come down here. A man who do an interview with me, I don't call him name. He said, Mota, what I asked you about this thing with this, some woman calculate something. I want to listen to me carefully, you know, because these people have these things all the way. Some, I don't know how much people hear about it, but if you didn't hear about it, you can call me after I don't play when I play. But some woman calculate something. I don't know what she use and calculate it and decide that the world are going to end the 31st of December. I don't have a 31st of December, 300,000 I have a 31st of December this year. You understand? That means that we now have no 2017. So I don't know young people, you know, salt. <laughs> we better repent. The, 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 and, and the bridge, you know, asks me, you know, when we think about it. And that, we start, we almost want to get back to them, you know. But me, I say, all right, Muta, cool yourself, cool yourself. Believe you me, relax. Where am I come from now? I want me give me my understanding about it. I mean, I say, brethren, what kind of understanding there? You know, she says some little fanatic, fundamentalist, Christian people, well, I mean, them get so frustrated that Jesus not come back yet, that they might try and make him come back by telling you something, so them calculate the thing. By the Look here, man. Let me tell you something. By the way, I heard quickly Trinidad, you know, <laughs> yesterday. I heard quickly Trinidad, but let me tell you something, man. You see, if the world are going to end the 31st, none of we now are going to know. May I tell you? Because it obviously some catastrophe is going to happen. And you never have your name, Curtis Mayfield, you know. Curtis Mayfield sing a tune, say, if there's a hell, the world will go and go there. If the world are going to end, more than likely it's a destruction, the world are going to be destroyed. Fear interpretation is that, well, upon the 31st, Jesus Christ going to come. I mean, this is serious thing me attack now, you know. This is like, Jesus Christ is going to come back and the rapture going to take place now. So, those who is with Jesus Christ going to go up and people like me are going to just burn up. And then now Jesus Christ is going to come now and then they're going to just they're on the earth for a thousand years. That is really. And this brethren now want to put it in the paper. Because it's a big story now, you know. It's a big story. I mean, maybe I'll, tomorrow, man, you'll wake up now and hear the story. But it's, we may never know about that story there. Say so the world are going to end the 31st. If me know the world are going to end the 31st, moon come at work. No, man, moon come at work, what's that? Moon up, maybe. Like when, when Prince had sing 1999, when everybody defeated the earth, I got end 2000. 1914, Jovia witnessed them tell you this and tell you that. They are the last, they are the last one was the big one where the brother come. They put all the TV, them and I tell you, say exactly, say the world, I got end. Why people want the world end? It's like them not have no joy in themselves. I mean, life is beautiful, man. You don't really want this end. But you don't have no control of it. Jesus Christ is going to come from the world. So, how much people hear that story they do? Because it's a gleaner call me, you know. It's people who work with a gleaner call me, you know, if you ask me about this thing, this new thing, you know, with this supposedly thing where it happened on the 31st of December 2016. So, I didn't make a tour plan when we did that plan. Now, I'm going to work out. <laughs> I did. I'm going to mash up. I just had sheep me now for about buy no car because I'm going to just fly God up. Now. Well, I'm going to fly up now the sky. I'm going to go down in the earth. But really and truly, I'm going to have to worry about no car. All them people, they have big building, big building and a plan. All Trump get a beat, you know. Trump thinks he's going to be president in January, you know. It's it salt. All them voting things, where they're going. All them, the, 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 the parish council election, everything get a beat, you know. The world is going to be the 31st. Eh? Hmm? <laughs> they, 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 they cover the patrol them. You know, you know what is it? 
Why, me, I mean, I go say a true me talk about it, you know. Me, me, I go say it again, you know. Me, me glad that you observe it, you know. Me, I go say it again, say, them cover the patrol, them on the road, where we are talking about, about three weeks now, me are talking about the whole them, you know. Yeah. From down on the square, come up, so I mean, notice, you know, when me I come up with two pack a while ago, say, me, no, see my baba and weave. Yeah. I mean, I said, rotted. The man, them look like the man listen to the program sneakily. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the one. I see but the one that shot with having shot with the whole, you know. The third of me I talk about it, you know. And by Saturday, I drive down them, you know, see the whole, you know. And me I say, all right, I'm going to go and talk. Yeah, I'm going to go and talk. Believe you me, because now I don't see not Bob and Weaver go on the road from just so. Go down there, so. But, but with that purpose of that far. With the purpose of that far, the world are going to turn the first. It not really matter again. All them show we are planning and all them things there. And Rasta talk with them one and go to Ethiopia. Better see a Jamaica and how the world is going to end. You can't go to Ethiopia. The world, them say. That means they no, no, go escape the judgment in this time. What a thing. So, I don't know this. I should have asked him. I could call him and ask him the name of the, the person who. And him sounds serious to you, know, like him all around, believe it to you, know. The way my ask me, you know, you know, it's like, true me, not believe it. You know, like, you want to get vexed with me, true me, not believe it. I mean, I say, but Bridget, why you want to believe that the world are going to end the 31st? I mean, really? You know what things we have to do in life? We may not accomplish it in life. Enough things, you know. I'm me, me not, me not, not ready for go yet. But if me I go, if, 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 if me I go, go, me can't help it. So let it be. I saw it go. Anyway, that is just something I really want to say, because... Then we have to talk New Year's Eve now. You mean say you mean say Jesus Christ gonna really come for New Year's for disturb our people party? <laughs> no, Rasta, <laughs> a terrible thing that man. You gonna come on the thirty first for disturb our people party? After people have spent so much money for God advertise them show and this and this and that, you gonna just match up the party? Oh gosh, man. Anyway, we we are gonna see. But an earthquake just leaked Trinidad. An earthquake just like Trinidad. I, I, I don't know. We, we, we do one or so. We do one or so. The place get hot and get cool and get hot again and rain a fall too much. Rain a fall too much, Rasta. Anyway, we tell you so we have something for play. We have to come forward to it. Pick it, pick it. Like, uh, is your fashion on fleek? On fleek? Check TK Rafine. R- Rock top brand, Stretty Styles, best quality. Call 510-1781 or 393-2019. I'm a classy man. Open Mondays to Thursdays, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Friday and Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Talk to the sister here, and I'm going to talk to her. Yeah, good afternoon, good night. Good night, yes. I, um, am going to be traveling to your country for the Rasta Roots Fest. That's what okay. I was told. No, this is Muta, you know. Hi, right, this is Muta Baruch I'm talking to. Hello. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, you are on the ear. It's not, oh, okay. it's not the operator you're talking to. It's Muta. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I see you yeah, explain it. Try to I'm, explain it. All right. I'm okay. Okay. You are the sister with the... You, the so you are the sister with the essential oils. We are. We use essential oils. Those are the lifeblood of the plant that okay. created those oils to work in harmony with our bodies, and it's a great way to take care of your wellness naturally. All right. So what you do? Well, you, you 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 use plants and what you do? Extract the plants and make the oils. A- abso- are you add- absolutely. Oils are extracted from the leaves, the flowers, the shrubs, the um, bark different parts of the plant, and they have um, amazing physiological and psychological benefits. They've been used since the beginning of time. Yes. It was the first medicine in the world. It's mentioned several times in the Bible in another scripture. Um, King Solomon in cedar wood mm. is an important oil. All of the buildings were made of cedar. So you, um, you, so actually, you actually plant the, 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 the herbs in and make the oil or you you go around no, and get no, the... No, we don't. We, we use the Young Living essential oils. Those are pure oils, and you can visit the farms and yeah. watch the process from the time the seed goes into the ground until the oil goes into the bottle. So they're guaranteed to be pure. Okay, okay. And you will bring a lot of them 
to the Herbs Festival. Absolutely. We have a booth at the Rasta Roots Festival, and um, we'll be there to allow people to smell them and, and just experience and learn a lot about how you can use them in your everyday life to take care of your own wellness. All right. When you say use them in your everyday life to take care of your wellness, you're talking about sickness or you're talking about your spirit? I have to be very careful with what I say because we have the FDA in the United States. And so there's... No, but you're talking to me in Jamaica, I know. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. We use oils topically, internally, and aromatically. Yeah. So it does help with your spiritual awareness, but it can also help with everyday um, ailments to help support your body to do what it does naturally, which is to take care of you. All right, so what, to take so care which of you. eyes would you say... As people spiritually, For which spiritual, one of these eyes? There's yeah, so which, many frankincense. We're t we're coming up on the Christmas season, and um, in the Bible, many people know the story of baby Jesus with frankincense, myrrh, yes. and gold. Frankincense is um, an oil that's used to help increase spiritual awareness. Okay, um, myrrh helps promote bonding and emotional positivity and comfort. So mm. there are just so many different uses. It activates the limbic portion of your brain where your emotions are stored and your memories are stored yeah. and help promote just peace and relaxation, which um, controls a lot of the systems in the body. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. you will be selling these eyes at the, at the festival? We, we will be selling them. We will be helping people get starter kits. Well, they will have an aromatic diffuser to diffuse the oil in the air, and we will be instructing people on how they can use them Every day to yes, replace yeah. things that they would use that have synthetics or chemical preparations. They would use the natural essential oils in place. Okay, well, I'll be down there, so I'll be looking for you. Alicia Ahalt. That's how you pronounce your name, Ahalt? Alicia Ahalt, yes, sir. And Ahalt. I cannot wait to meet you. I've enjoyed your program. Oh, you'll be listening to them. I can't yeah. wait to meet you. Oh, that's yes, sir. Okay. Yep. <laughs> All right, give thanks. All right, so I will, I will definitely look out for you. Because eyes is something that really, I, I love eyes dearly. And, you know, well, we I have can't some... wait for you to experience what we have. And, um, and I can't wait to just kind of give you some instruction and guide you to some resources that will really help you incorporate them into your life. It's life-changing. Okay. All right. Give thanks, Mama. Give thanks. Where are you calling from, by the way? Flor well, I'm calling from Pensacola, Florida. I mean, Florida. I okay. 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 All right. I'll see you this weekend then. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, well, give thanks, give thanks. Yes, Sister Old deals in essential oils, oils spiritually, mentally, and physically. It's always good to hear that. I know a whole lot of people don't have ball, but uh, them don't have no oil, and the oil, too much oil up, oil up, and all them something. The oil is a good thing. Don't make them tricky and make you get warped. Africans use enough oils, essential oils. We use oils. Uh, oils don't have to deal with necessarily obia. But we associate things where it's not certain mentality and get a negative connotation. When it is not, you know, if you notice all the things then where we start to go against, it's things where we as African people deal with, you know. Yes. And so when you hear man at all about Hail and too much hail this and hail that and obi and all them something there. It's because them know say we used to use these things for our spiritual guidance and manifestation. Just like what is that talk about frankincense and myrrh. If you ever go out a certain place and burn frankincense and myrrh, people are run you. Certain people don't like smell it because it have a it linked to a certain kind of thinking. So when them smell the, Af the frankincense and the myrrh, it, it, it give them a... It's it not that it's not do them nothing, you know, it's just that them have a certain thing. It's just like a man who has smell ganja beside him. A rasta has smoked ganja beside him and it starts to say, oh, it stink. You understand? And then a man has smoked cigarette beside him and him not smell it. Him not, him not feel no way about it. Well, it's the same thing with the herbs and the, you know, where people call... African people, witch doctor. You can't be a witch and a doctor at the same time. It's madness. But we who deal with the healing and the authentic 
African traditional things, whether it's food, clothes, or shelter, or just thinking, we are looked down on. So we just want you to know that oils is not a bad thing because even coconut oil is a good thing. We didn't use coconut oil until them started to tell us coconut this and coconut that. And now we see big movie star Anjali Jolie and all these people is recommending coconut oil. Can you believe that? We who used to use coconut oil enough hardly use it. Go get the old dirty sire oil from foreign and all them and bring come to Jamaica. When we have coconut don't you so? And now we see them and make a big thing out of it now. But coconut oil is good for this and you must rub it in your ear and rub it on your skin and all these things and and we did have it all the while. But them demonize it power. Most of the things that we use, them demonize it. People don't like smell frankincense round if you put a certain aisle by your people who are runway. And say, Lord, you're gone in now, you know. You rub up, rub up with aisle and demonize it. Anyway, we're not going to make them tell we how to do things. We are doing it how we want to do it. So, this time of the year is what they call the Yuletide season. And every year we have to remind the people, them, do you know what you are celebrating when you are celebrating this Yuletide season? Where's, where does this thing come from? You know, people always I say majority. It's like if the majority do something, you have that notion of say the majority always right. It's like because it is in the majority, it must right. And people couldn't push a lie out there so much that a whole lot of people believe it so much. But I want to tell you, you know, most of the Western world is based upon half a big lies. It's a series of lies the Western world have we all live out as our reality. So when a man gives you a certain thinking and make you actually believe, say, he's your reality, you know, same grab you. That's why the man said powerful people will never educate powerless people in what it means to take away the power from them. Because the aim of powerful people is to steer powerful by enemies necessary. And what them use is different symbols and different thinking for grab way. And then when it grab way now, we start to let it out like there's our thinking. And a whole heap of the things right now where you see people would have died for in the Western world. Yeah. Certain philosophy, certain belief where people would have died for. And if it don't have nothing in reality, in history. It don't have no historical reference. And if it have a historical reference, it don't have nothing to do with for them culture, for them people, for them understanding of life. But because one person is more, or one a group of people is more powerful than the next one, them can use that for manipulate not only your economical, social, and political order, but your spiritual order too. So our spiritual connection with our ancestors, because even if you talk about ancestors, in this part of the world, as a Christian, if you talk about ancestors, people feel that you're gone crazy. Yes, you're not supposed to talk about ancestors. Yes, still them are dealing with ancestors. Because them have Mary, them have Noah, them have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Obadiah, al And that is for them ancestors, you know. But if you say ancestors, where them why I say saint? You, want, you must say Saint Mary, Saint John, Saint Paul, Saint Matthew. You know, if you say our ancestors, it get crazy upon them. So, what them do is manipulate the mind. And whenever we book up our real self, we, we shun it. 
We don't really want to know nothing about that. We look upon that as terrible, evil. No look good. You know, it's like, oh, black people, no proud of them ear. A simple thing like your ear. Them have your beliefs say your ear is bad ear. No ear, no bad. Whether it's shiny ear, Indian ear, African ear, none of them no bad. But we grow for beliefs that we have bad ear. It's, we are the only people who have bad ear, you know. According to all the things going on. And so we do everything possible to make the ear don't look like how nature decides that it should look. Everything. We do all manner of things to it. So as not to make it look natural. Like how nature commands it to look. And so is our thinking. Our thinking has been manipulated to the point where when we start to push out certain argument, we actually believe, say, it has come from our experience and certain logical understanding of things. And if you dig deep down to it, you realize, say, but it don't have nothing to do with your reality. So why we have said that? We have said this because this is the time now when one of the biggest lies that has been told has manipulated most of the Western world. And that lie is that a man named Jesus Christ was born on the 25th of December. All of them know says lie, they might tell. All. But you see, the normal person now continue in the thinking. And when them find them buck up on a wall now, them start to tell say, well, you know, at least it allows you to gather with your family and give gifts and all these things. Like other people never have nothing to do these things. And them lick it out with someone to the point now that we feel say we have to lean upon them. And we have the things them in front of us. We make we actually believe, say, are our things. And we don't know how the things them come about. Christian believe in our things where them are fight against. But because it's getting at them so much now, them don't fight against it again. Them start to find another justification for the thing. So when you tell them, say, but Christian a pagan thing. Because Christian, a Christian, me hear this thing about pagan, you know. Christian say, paganism, paganism, Edenism. Yet still, most of the doctrine that them have is based upon the same paganism and Edenism, where them glorify into, but not want to accept that them has now adapted something that is antichrist according to Christianity. Most of the things them that Christians accept right now most of the things with them accept right now, including this time of the year, is antichrist. It will have nothing to do with a man who lived 2,000 years ago, according to Christian doctrine. But it gets perpetuated to the point where you keep repeating a lie. It is no longer a lie to the person who put it in them consciousness and make it seep in them consciousness to the point now where them can't tell the difference between what is true and what is lie. So everything now become true. And this time of the year is one of them things where it's a big lie, but because it keep reverberating and keep coming back, coming back, there is no... Well, some people, I'm not going to say everybody, because you have people, you have Christian denomination will not celebrate it. You have a whole heap of Christian denomination when you celebrate it because they know. And if you is a Christian, if you is a Christian and you claim Christmas as part of Christianity, something is intrinsically wrong with your perception of what Christianity is all about. I mean not a Christian, but me know, me know that. And them know who gave you that thinking that Christmas, Easter, Christmas tree, Santa Claus have nothing to do with no man who lived 2,000 years ago. 
not Natal. This was conjured up by big businessmen and people who was actually fighting against Christianity. It's people who fight against Christianity give you Christmas. Maybe you know I accept it from me because me arrest on me say these things. But if you dig deep into the history, I was going to play a documentary you know, about Christmas and a whole heap of different things that involve with Christmas. For sure you're all weird and ridiculous. It is for we really accept this thing as a Christian way and not realizing say you were brainwashed into believing this thing and because most of the world around you celebrate this thing you cannot come out of that box and decide say no because you will be looked upon like an idiot Christmas will have nothing to do with Christ. Nothing. Historically or otherwise, it have nothing to do with Christ. No man on earth can tell you, say, when this man named Jesus Christ is born. Not one person know when this man. Them can't tell you when Caesar did born. Were born before him. Them can't tell you when Cleopatra did born. Them can't tell you when the Roman this did happen. No man can tell you. When a man named Jesus Christ is born for earth, it's pure speculation. How is that possible? If it was a real man, how is it possible that you can't tell nobody when he did born two years, thousand years ago? You can't tell when people born four thousand years ago. Date and time. Terrible. This is the cutting edge. Hey, I. I would have prefer to say happy holidays still because, as I said before, Christ has have nothing to do with Christmas. But that's the way the cookie crumbles. Love. For many of us, our fondest childhood memories revolve around the traditions of Christmas. It is a time that many around the world celebrate as the birth of Jesus Christ, the Savior and Messiah of mankind. In recent years, however, the spiritual holiday has become a time of mass marketing and crass commercialism. Incredibly, for those of the pagan world, this has always been the greatest time of the year to celebrate and practice the works of darkness. The pagan calendar identifies this period as the winter solstice. It was during the pre-Christian midwinter pagan celebrations of Scandinavia's Norsemen where today's Christmas traditions began. As a means of honoring the pagan sex and fertility god Yule, a 12-day celebration during the month of December was inaugurated. A large single log considered to be a phallic idol was lit on fire and kept burning for 12 days. Animal or human nights are at their longest. For those of the pagan world, this has always been the greatest time of the year to celebrate and practice the works of darkness. The pagan calendar identifies this period as the winter solstice. It was during the pre-Christian midwinter pagan celebrations of Scandinavia's Norsemen where today's Christmas traditions began. As a means of honoring the pagan sex and fertility god Yule, a 12-day celebration during the month of December was inaugurated. A large single log considered to be a phallic idol was lit on fire and kept burning for 12 days. Animal or human sacrifices were offered in the fire on each of those days. Wild, delirious reveling accompanied the daily sacrifices as drunken participants defiantly strove to make contact with spirits. A thousand miles away in pre-Christian Rome, celebrants were paying homage to their own gods during the winter solstice. Witchcraft traditions hold that a number of pagan gods were given birth during this period, including Dionysus, Attis, and Baal, chief male god of fertility and licentiousness. Another pagan god from Persia, identified as Mithra, 
was said to have been born specifically on December 25th. Mithra was the god of the unconquerable sun, the god of the light between heaven and earth, worshipped at that time by an influential Roman cult. His birth symbolized an end to the long nights and a return to the dominance of the sun. During the month-long winter solstice celebration, courts in Rome were closed. Any and all crimes were allowed. Homosexuality, cross-dressing, and uncontrolled debauchery reigned supreme. Rome's order was turned upside down. Even children were allowed to join in the drunken orgies as part of the Juvenalia celebration. By 270 AD, the Roman Emperor Aurelian had made it official, setting aside a seven-day period from December the 17th through the 24th, culminating in an exchange of gifts on December the 25th to celebrate the birth of the sun god. This Roman orgy to end all orgies later became known as Saturnana, in honor of the god Saturn, the god of excess. Roman soldiers invading Britain brought with them their pagan orgiistic traditions. Upon taking root in England, Saturnalia became known as the Festival of Fools reigned over by the Lord of Misrule. By the 4th century, the influential government-sanctioned Church of Rome, unable to outlaw the growing number of pagan practices, chose instead to adopt them into their so-called official Christianity. The church believed this would attract more pagans to their fold. Up until this time, the birthday of Jesus Christ, the Jewish Messiah, had not been celebrated at all. Ignoring scriptures, however, indicating that the birth probably did not occur during the winter, the church nevertheless confused biblical history and made Jesus' birthday coincide with the pagan god Mithra. The birth date of the sun god had now become the birth date of the Son of God. It was hoped that the pagan celebrations of Saturnalia would merge into this new legally sanctioned form of Christianity. The church's practice of changing the dates of Christian events to coincide with pagan festivals continued, and by the 7th century, Pope Gregory I had ordered Augustine of Canterbury to incorporate any and all pagan practices and customs into the expanding Roman Catholic Church. During the Middle Ages, the debased Mardi Gras atmosphere of what was now known as Christ's Mass had reached a fevered pitch. Common practices included open sex in the streets, rioting, murder, and a number of pagan druidic Halloween rituals. This blood-drenched celebration got so out of hand that by 1652, following the execution of King Charles I, Christ's Mass was finally outlawed in England. A religious reform movement began sweeping the country led by Puritan Oliver Cromwell. The Puritans took the biblical mandate seriously which commanded that Christianity remain pure and separate from paganism. Despite their noble efforts, the celebration simply went underground and by 1656, after only four short years under the ban, the public's demand for the legalization of Christ's Mass had become insurmountable. The appointment of Charles II to the throne restored England's monarchy and with it the celebration of Christ's Mass. The Puritans had lost England, but they held high hopes for the new world. When the first settlers came from England, uh, they were, for the most part, Puritans. They came here for religious freedom. They came here to be free to worship God without a hierarchy and without the corruption of the organized church that they had known before. And uh, when they came, they came with the clear knowledge of the danger of these pagan practices that had become so dear to the hearts of uh, their ancestors. Following England's lead in 1659, the colonies of America had likewise outlawed Christmas. For 200 years, the clergy in New England battled to keep the riotous celebrations honoring the pagan god Saturn from infiltrating the New World. The Reverend Cotton Mather had warned in a Christmas Day sermon in 1712, Can you in your conscience think that your Holy Savior is honored by hard drinking, lewd reveling, and by a mass fit for none but Baucus or Saturn? 
but the public's taste for sin and revelry persisted. In 1828, gang rioting during the Saturnalia-like Christmas celebrations got so bad that cities such as New York were forced to institute a professional police force for the first time in order to control the savagery. Christmas was not only not widely celebrated, in many cases, uh, many places, Christmas celebrations were actually outlawed. And this was because of uh, the attitude of many of the churches who regarded it as primarily as a pagan celebration and as a reproach to the Lord. By the mid-19th century, American churches were the last remaining holdout in the war against the validation of Christmas. However, they too finally succumbed as a result of the efforts of the American Sunday School Society, who began advocating Christmas programs for children as a method of filling the pews. The society argued that children could be taught about the birth of Christ through the reenactment of the nativity. They also offered candy and treats to the children as a means of enticing families into accepting the holiday despite its notorious history and blatantly pagan roots. The successful technique of bribing children with candy would later be used on an unsuspecting American populace in the effort to promote the acceptance of the pagan rituals of Halloween. However, it was the work of England's most popular writer, Charles Dickens, whose ghostly 1843 book, A Christmas Carol, cemented the Christmas holiday in the hearts of Americans forever. Dickens' well-loved story made the pagan Christmas feasts, shining trees, glittering shops, and family warmth irresistible to those wanting to experience the holiday. Coming to America in 1867 to promote his work, Charles Dickens packed theaters as he read his story to cheering audiences around the country. A Christmas carol gripped America and destroyed any final attempt to stop the evolution of Christmas. By 1875, the Puritans had been beaten, and by 1890, all American states had voted to make Christmas a legal holiday. of the Christmas Yule Log stems directly from the worship of the pre-Christian Scandinavian fertility god Yule. The burning of this phallic idol is also responsible for the concept of the 12 days of Christmas, which represented the 12 daily sacrifices offered up in the Yule Log's flames. Another uh, good example of the um, pagan elements of Christmas is the whole concept of Yule and the Yule Log. The, uh, the very term is derived from uh, uh, the Norse god Yule, spelled J-U-L. And uh, uh, every year around Christmas time, uh, a huge log was uh, uh, cut down and uh, fashioned into a uh, fertility symbol and then burned uh, for 12 days. And on each successive day, a, a, a new sacrifice to the god Yule was performed uh, uh, in the fire, and a new sacrificial victim was uh, was burned to death. Uh, sometimes, but not always, these sacrificial victims were uh, human beings. And the whole uh, notion of the 12 days of Christmas also comes to us from this uh, Norse pagan tradition. In an attempt to blur the origins of this horrific ritual, the Church of Rome placed the first day of the Mass of Christ on December 25th and the 12th day on January the 6th. Despite no scriptural references for January the 6th, it was selected as the day the wise men supposedly arrived to offer gifts to the newborn Christ. This day then has become known as Epiphany. This is the cutting edge on RFM today. I go through the pieces. We hope you take a stock and listen. It's all about clarity and it's all about history and how certain things was brought to us without any explanation. And we just gulp it down. Brothers and sisters, this is Jan. Mm. Join us with respect for our nation. All right. The time is. Let us stand and defend clock. this one. Peace and love. Thank you. Eternal 
service, buffing, mechanical reports, and insurance estimates. You guessed New Car World is the best. We also do insurance works. Visit us at 9B Duke Street, Montego Bay. Call us at 3530473 or 6223713. New Car World Auto Repairs. We drive away the fear. Carnac Hardware Limited, Main Street, Salem, Runaway Bay. Pre-Christmas sale, Friday, December 16, 2016. Unbeatable prices, one day only. Carb cement, $1,060 for bag. Low price on half-inch steel, save $5,000 off six-inch blocks. Paints, lumber, tiles, tools, electrical, and plumbing fittings. Get 10 to 20% off. Call us at 973-5525 or 973-7669. Carnac Hardware Limited. A tradition of great things. December 11th is going to be a movie as TIFA celebrates her birthday, Watermania style, at Red Stripe Aqua Meets Bubbles, the biggest super inclusive water party of the year at the Jewel Lagoon Water Park, Jewel Resort, Runaway Bay, 4,500 pre sold, 5,000 at the gate. Follow at It's the Tiffa and at Top Ranking Events. For more info on ticket outlets, shuttle bus service, and crazy room deals at the resort, Red Stripe Aqua Meets Bubbles, it's going to be mad. Must be 18 years and older. Drink responsibly. ID required. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kingston, the home of football. Here's a message from our captain. Ladies, the big one is back. Broadway Productions presents Footloose, World of Girls, Kingston's biggest Christmas party. Saturday, December 17th, Footloose Headquarters, Mass Jam. Tickets, 1,000 free sold, 1,200 at the gate. Ladies, 2 for 1 before 12. Tickets at Triple Century, Extra, Genus Pharmacy, Avery's Beauty Concept. Sponsored by Firm Fitness, Chargers, Batteries, and more. Chad Auto Sales, On Point, Zip, Irie, Pink Fabrics, Flawless, and Sign Express. We the sound and tell the people. Rise and shine. Kingster Golf, the Rubber Dub Champion play at the Rubber Dub Champ St. Anne's Bay on the highway this Saturday, 10th of December. With Daddy Uroy, the teacher, Ninja Man, Charlie Chaplin, Admiral Tibet, Ginger, Terry Gansy, General Trees, Bushman, Mighty General, Natural Black, Roland Burrell, Major Light. Saturday, the 10th of December, Kingster Golf, Rubber Dub Champ St. Anne's Bay on the highway. Rise and shine. Thursday afternoon from 12.15 to 1.15 on Easy Scan King. We hide so part mind and soul to soul. Then test our soul in element. Show the potential. Light I'm Sly Dunbar. I'm my name Robbie Shakespeare. Stay tuned to IRF and Muta Baruka. Right now, this is the cutting edge. Same. The Muta. Muta. <laughs> the man rough. Man rough. It's just tough, tough, tough. Cutting head sharp. Sharp, sharp, sharp. Stay then has become known as Epiphany. During the Dark Ages, the European custom of putting an oil-lighted wick lamp in the windows during the 12 days of Christmas signified to neighbors that the occupants were participating in the pagan worship of the phallic idol Yule. In today's commercialism, this is where we get the tradition of decorating our houses with Christmas lights. The Yule log custom was originally brought over to America by Scandinavian immigrants during the 1600s. 
And despite attempts to ban the tradition, it has stayed with us to this very day. Today, when we wish someone Yuletide greetings, we are in a sense invoking the power of the fertility god Yule upon that person. Saturnalia celebrations, holly and other greens were hung over doorways as part of a pagan ritual to ward off evil. To deck the halls with boughs of holly was to acknowledge the powers of the nature gods. According to Wiccan rituals, placing holly or other greens in the shape of a circle or wreath accentuated its magical power. Similarly, mistletoe, when used in the casting of Wiccan or Druidic spells, could render a woman helpless and open to sexual exploitation. This is where we get our custom of hanging mistletoe in doorways today, and if a woman is caught underneath, she may be kissed and must not resist. The fir tree, uh, the mistletoe, uh, all of these things uh, typically uh, are come from uh, uh, overtly uh, pagan traditions, uh, in, typically in, from Northern Europe, German, Norse, in uh, English. Likewise, evergreen trees have always represented sex and fertility in pagan cultures. During the winter solstice, trees would be chopped down, brought inside, set up, and decorated as idols for worship. The Christmas tree was regarded uh, as a as a sacred tree. Uh, the uh, the pagans of Northern Europe uh, typically uh, worshipped trees. They uh, regarded trees uh, and groves as sacred. So uh, uh, the bringing of the uh, tree into the house would be a way of uh, bringing this uh, supernatural uh, source of blessing. Uh, into your home. That was that was the whole idea that there were there were spirits uh, who resided in the trees. In the Middle Ages, the tradition of the winter solstice Christmas tree primarily took root in Germany. During his reign, King George I, himself of German extraction, brought the custom to Victorian England. German immigrants settling in Pennsylvania did the same in America during the early 1800s. In 1848, the London Illustrated News published this famous engraving depicting Queen Victoria and her royal family beside a decorated Christmas tree. And within a few years, nearly every English household had their own tree in allegiance to the monarchy. By 1900, the U.S. Forest Service estimated that at least one in five homes in America had adopted the Christmas tree tradition. Thousands of years earlier, God, speaking through the prophet Jeremiah, warned against this pagan practice in the Old Testament. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the ways of the heathen, for the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, they deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers that it move not. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. Santa Claus is another uh, good example of a pagan element of, of Christmas. Santa Claus, as we know him today, is a uh, an amalgamation of several different traditions. But uh, in most cultures throughout the world, uh, you will find the existence of what is known as hearth gods. Uh, gods who uh, guard uh, the hearth and the chimney and keep the fires burning and make sure the food cooks properly and the people are warm and what have you. And at a certain time of year... Uh, in the middle of winter, typically, uh, the hearth god dressed in red will come down the chimney to reward those who uh, have pleased him during the course of the previous year and to uh, lay uh, curses or hexes or other forms of uh, uh, punishment upon uh, people who have displeased him. The concept of Santa Claus has had a long and winding history with a number of diverse cultures contributing to the composite character we have today. Beginning once again in Scandinavia, Santa's original incarnation was in the form of Odin, the pagan god of thunder a tall fellow with a long flowing beard who inhabited the spirit-infested Nordic forests. Odin would travel the sky during the winter solstice deciding who would die and who would prosper. Most believers were frightened of this particular time of year. In England, 
Odin eventually evolved into Father Christmas, who, crowned with sprigs of holly, travels the countryside getting roaring drunk as part of the Festival of Fools celebration. Frequently, he would be accompanied by a horned goat, ironically the biblical symbol of those who reject the salvation of Jesus Christ. According to the traditions of the Church of Rome, there was a Turkish bishop named Nicholas who hailed from Myra in Asia Minor during the 4th century. He was known as the patron saint of seafaring men. Over the centuries, as the legend began to unfold, it was rumored that St. Nicholas had actually captured the devil himself, put him in chains, and made him his personal servant. Recognized in various cultures as Krampus, Beelzebub, or Zwart Pete, Black Peter, this assistant of St. Nicholas is best known by his German name, Necht Ruprecht. Described as a hideous horned creature, the servant Ruprecht was a dark and sinister figure who stood in stark contrast to the saintly Nicholas. Somehow, Father Christmas's companion, the horned goat, had metamorphosized into the foreboding horned devil called Ruprecht. As St. Nicholas traveled from house to house, inquiring about the behavior of children, Ruprecht would drop candy and gifts down the chimney into the good children's shoes which had been placed there. It was from this story that we get our tradition of hanging stockings on the mantle at Christmas time. If able to recite a verse or demonstrate a skill for St. Nicholas, the child would receive a gift. If unable to remember a verse or if the child had been bad, he or she would receive a switch or a whip. Ruprecht also carried a large sack which he would frequently use to haul away the really bad boys and girls. As more and more Christian churches began combining the pagan rituals of the winter solstice with the celebration of the birth of Christ, emphasis on St. Nicholas's role began to shift. Some cultures began to downplay the role of St. Nicholas but surprisingly retained Ruprecht. Eventually, Necht Ruprecht was made the companion and servant to the Christ child himself. In this scenario, the devil is actually given the title Venoxman or Santa Claus. 19th century writer Theodore Storm, in his story about Necht Ruprecht, even goes so far as to describe the switches given to the children by Ruprecht as tools to be used in sadomasochistic rituals. Soon, the image of Ruprecht would fade from the Christmas tradition, but not his sadistic influence. Many of the early depictions of Santa Claus portrayed him not as a jolly gift giver, but of an unfriendly disciplinarian complete with a ready switch or whip. One of the problems with the Christmas gift thing for children is that it really is a religious teaching, a wrong religious teaching, because it teaches them that if they're nice, they get the gifts. If they're naughty, they don't. Or in my case, I was taught that he would leave us a bundle of switches. Uh, isn't that interesting? Uh, it's a salvation by uh, my own personal virtue. But, but there's a second thing wrong with it, and that is that they're going to get those gifts whether they're naughty or nice, because most parents love their children and, and won't, wouldn't dream of quote, ruining their Christmas, and they're not going to ruin Christmas, they're going to give those children the gifts anyway, and some, sooner or later those thinking children are going to realize, I wasn't very nice, but I got the gift anyway. So it isn't important to be nice. It isn't important to do what is right and avoid what is wrong. German immigrants coming to America during the 1620s tried to influence the New World with the stories of St. Nicholas and his gift-giving companion, Necht Ruprecht. But somehow the idea just didn't take hold until almost 200 years later. In 1819, America's best-selling author, Washington Irving, used his influence to promote St. Nicholas in a popular Christmas story titled Brace Bridge Hall. Consulting Irving's writings, Episcopalian minister Clement Clark Moore penned a decidedly secular tale called A Visit from St. Nicholas in 1822. Later retitled The Night Before Christmas, Moore's poem was based on the tales of German and Dutch immigrants who had come to America. Intended originally only for his own children, Moore's story was published in the Troy Sentinel in New York and became an overnight sensation. Gone were the bishop's remnant of St. Nicholas. He was now a jolly old elf imbued with supernatural powers. 
Moore had also replaced Nicholas's companion, the horned necked Ruprecht, with eight horned magical reindeer. As the popularity of the night before Christmas grew, Moore became increasingly concerned that the story's emphasis on the supernatural and its disregard for Christ would reflect poorly on his position as a minister. As a result, he refused to take credit for its creation until the story became so popular that he could no longer resist. Forty years later, illustrator Thomas Nast, political cartoonist for Harper's Weekly, seared the image of Santa Claus into the minds of the world by creating a drawing which combined Moore's jolly old elf with images of St. Nicholas taken from his own native Bavaria. By 1880, Santa was a thoroughly secularized folk hero who had become increasingly irresistible to retailers worldwide. One factor that has contributed to uh, the paganization of Christmas, the complete paganization of Christmas, has been the element of commercialism. Uh, it may seem odd to think of it in that context, but uh, remember that Christ himself identified the love of money as a spiritual force in and of itself. And where it comes into play, it has a kind of naturally hostile effect on, uh, on the gospel and the, uh, uh, the Christian faith. So the commercialization of Christmas has helped to h highlight the pagan elements and to uh, drive the overtly Christian elements further underground. To me, the most obscene thing about Christmas celebrations and customs as we know them is that as a result of these things, Jesus is displaced in the hearts of children by Santa Claus. The love, affection, appreciation, trust, the, the desire to emulate these things that they should have in their hearts and minds as growing children for Jesus himself, to whom they owe everything. Uh, instead, this has been stolen. This has been uh, raped out of their hearts, in a sense, and displaced by the myth of Santa Claus. He takes the place of God or Jesus Christ in the special world that is Christmas. Uh, he has supernatural knowledge of, uh, of your history. He has supernatural knowledge of, uh, of your present, of your attitudes. He's keeping a list. He knows who's naughty and nice. Your parents don't even know that. Uh, he's obviously got some uh, some conduit to knowledge that is uh, beyond the human. Uh, and he, uh, he flies through the air. Uh, he was capable of visiting every place on the globe in the course of a single night. In many, many ways, Santa exhibits supernatural qualities that uh, provide a kind of a surrogate deity or a substitute for, uh, for God or for Christ. Myths, by definition, evolve and change, and things are added. Uh, we, we used to have a Santa Claus figure uh, that was confused with St. Nicholas and confused with other pagan figures, and then somehow... He evolved through the drawings of Thomas Nast and others into what we see today, but he had a sleigh with eight supernatural reindeer that can fly. And so the, the Christmas traditions that are pagan continue to change. But the truth of Jesus, the truth of the Incarnation, the truth that the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, never changes, never will. scriptures in the Bible, including the second chapter of Luke, record the events surrounding the birth of the Messiah. A decree from Caesar Augustus had gone out, requiring all people to return to the city of their origin for taxation purposes. Mary, who was pregnant with a child conceived by the Holy Spirit, made the difficult journey to Bethlehem along with her husband Joseph. Both Joseph and Mary were of the lineage of King David. Upon arrival, they found all the inns to be full, but were provided with a stable where Mary could have her baby. At the same time, an angel announcing the birth of the Messiah appeared to shepherds tending their flocks in a field nearby. The stunned shepherds hurried to Bethlehem and found the baby Jesus lying in a manger just as the angel had declared. Although traditional nativity scenes placed three wise men at the stable at the time of Jesus Christ's birth, According to scripture, these wise men visited Jesus later at his home. Because three gifts are named, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, 
Tradition says three men gave them, but exactly how many wise men visited Jesus is not known. The birth of Jesus Christ miraculously fulfilled a number of Old Testament prophecies about the coming Messiah, including that he would be born in Bethlehem, that he would be born of a virgin, and that he would be a descendant of King David's. The, the concept or the idea of celebrating the birth of Jesus once a year had apparently never occurred to the church fathers. In the first three centuries of the church's history, there was no such thing. And I think God perhaps very carefully avoided telling us in the scriptures when he was born. We can be sure of one thing, it wasn't in late December. And uh, because in the first place, shepherds don't abide by their flocks in the fields by night in late December. It's too cold. They take them out in the morning to pasture, uh, uh, protect them while they eat all day, and then bring them back in at night. So it wasn't in late December. <clears throat> it, it, it's an interesting thing and perhaps uh, an intellectually uh, tantalizing thought to try to figure out when he was born. And it can be done uh, within limits. And uh, if it mattered, and apparently it doesn't matter to God, it probably, he was probably born in late September. Some scholars point out that according to Scripture, the birth of Jesus may have taken place in the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles or September 29th. Ironically, this would have placed his conception right around December 25th. The timing of other events such as the temple service of Zacharias and the pregnancy of Mary's cousin Elizabeth lend credence to December 25th as being the date of Jesus' conception. Since Christians believe that life begins at conception anyway and not at birth as pro-abortionists believe, this may be a more appropriate reason to remember this time of the year as the period in which God came to earth in human form. For some, Christmas today simply means a time to get together as a family. For pagans, it is a deeply religious time to celebrate the winter solstice. Retailers, of course, view it with eyes towards making huge profits. Others use this time to reflect on the birth or conception of Jesus Christ, while many parents use Christmas to perpetuate the myth of Santa Claus to their children. In order to carry on this myth of Santa Claus, we must lie to our children. We must deceive them. We literally must lie to our children. And one of the wonderful things about children is that they naturally believe everything that we tell them when they're small. They trust us to tell them the truth. And if we deceive them in this way, it has to be destructive because at some point in their future lives, they're going to wonder if other things we told them were true. The things we told them about the Lord, were they really true? It plants the seeds of doubt. And anyway, it creates disappointment. It creates disillusionment. To my mind, the question is not so much whether to celebrate Christmas or even how to celebrate Christmas, but to be able to make any decision knowledgeably. Well, Visit uh, Mooney's Auto Parts, 37... Just clear, um, uh, it's the historical perspective of Christmas as a Juliet, especially to the different things them um, that Christians use to really celebrate it, not knowing the origin of this usage. Now we're going to play one from the History Channel, which is not a perspective like the first one, even though it have a lot of things in it that relate to the first the first documentary play. The reason why we are do that is because the first one is as it relates to the Christian mindset and the Christian identifying. It's like, I think, like the same day, them would have tell you, say, them not celebrate Christmas. Because them know that Christmas now have nothing to do with Christ. This next one we're going to play is about Christmas. A lot of the information is almost the same. But it coming from a new child point of view. The Christmas tree at Rockefeller Center. It's hard to imagine a Christmas in New York without it. But like many Christmas traditions, the tree is a relative newcomer to the Christmas story. Only since the early 19th century has the decorated tree been an important part of the American Christmas celebration. Hello, I'm Harry Smith. Welcome to the History Channel. 
Christmas trees, candy canes, even Santa Claus seem like they've been around forever. But many of these Christmas traditions are surprisingly recent. Join us as we look back at how a holiday that started in pagan Rome became the centerpiece of the Christian year and why this season is known as much for shopping as the birth of the Christ child. Stay with us for Christmas Unwrapped. It is a story everyone knows. After a rude refusal by a local innkeeper, Mary and Joseph bedded down in a barn in Bethlehem. The next day, Mary gave birth to a son, the Son of God. Those are the biblical origins of Christmas. But centuries before Jesus walked the earth, early Europeans were celebrating light and birth in the darkest days of winter. In the Norse country, this winter celebration was known as Yule. Around December 21st, the winter solstice, fathers and sons would drag home the biggest log they could find and set it on fire. The Yule log warmed, but it also looked ahead. Each spark was said to represent a pig or calf to be born in the spring. Also dragged inside were evergreens, the one plant that could make it through a Norse winter. Evergreens prove that life persisted in this dark time. There's a natural attraction to that which lives through the winter when one is struggling to survive through the winter. The evergreen is that part of nature that seems impervious to uh, the coming of winter and the, uh, and the diminishing of the sun. And so it's an absolutely natural symbol, one which I think you react to almost without thinking about. For as long as the Yule log burned, about 12 days, feasting and revelry reigned supreme. In fact, this was one of the few times that meat was abundant, since cattle had just been slaughtered for the long winter. There is a necessity to kill most of the cattle, because you can't keep them alive over the winter when there's nothing to feed them on. You keep a few alive for breeding. But there is an opportunity for a great blowout, for a great feast, time to party. <laughs> The party raged inside in defiance of winter's deadly howl. There is a spooky feel about the northern Yuletide festivals. You may be all right there in the hall of the blazing fires, but outside there are demons, there are spirits. In Germany, the pagan god Odin lent his name to this midwinter holiday. Early Germans were terrified of Odin, whose nocturnal flights decided who would prosper or perish in the coming year. Later, we'd see another Christmas sky rider, Santa Claus. But for now, staying inside became the smartest choice at this frightening time of the year. A thousand miles away in Rome, winter was less harrowing, but the December festivals were just as elaborate. One week before the winter solstice, Romans began celebrating Saturnalia, a month-long orgy of food and drink. 
Named for the god Saturn, which meant plenty, Rome's established order was turned on its head during this wild, delirious time. The Saturnalia celebrations were certainly times of revelry, of, of turning the social order upside down, of having the master pretend to be the slave and the slave pretend to be the master. Sort of a time out of time in which one could celebrate a, a kind of uh, uh, disorder in the universe. One of the holiday's important feasts was Juvenalia, which celebrated the children of Rome. Although these early festivals are not necessarily about children particularly, but they are about fertility, children did have their particular place. The indulgence of children, of course, is a, very much a part of our modern Christmas, um, but it did have its place even in these ribald, drunken festivals that the Romans had. Among the upper classes in Rome, solstice celebrations were significantly more sober. Many influential Romans worshipped Mithra, the god of the unconquerable sun. To this small but powerful sect, the birthday of Mithra was the holiest day of the year. December 25th was the winter solstice in that part of the world. And it was also understood to be the birthday of the sun god, Mithra. And Mithra was said to be born from a rock. Shepherds came to worship him as he was an infant god born out in that pastoral place in the fields. And many of those stories, of course, have come into Christian tradition. While Romans were worshipping the sun god, a new religion was taking hold throughout the empire. At first, Christians didn't celebrate the birth of Christ. His resurrection was the essential fact of the new religion. By the fourth century, however, the question of the holy birth became impossible to ignore. For Christians, the fact of his birth was settled, but the date remained a mystery. The Bible doesn't mention exactly when Christ was born, but certain facts suggest it probably was not in December. So if you're going to sort through the runes of the scriptures, uh, Jesus was probably born in the spring. If the shepherds are out in the fields watching their flock by night, uh, we're not talking about one of the cold spells uh, at the heart of winter. If pagan Rome was already celebrating the birth of Mithra on December 25th, it seemed natural to honor the birth of the Christ child at the same time. By the 4th century, the church made it official. December 25th was declared the feast day of the Nativity. But a possibly short step from the feast day of the risen sun, S-U-N, to the feast day of the risen sun, S-O-N. So, in a sense, it's a very good choice that the symbolism is there because, um, you know, the feast day of the unconquered sun was about fertility, about birth. Um, and so, obviously, it's a Christian Christmas. The church knew it could not outlaw the pagan traditions of Christmas, so it set out to adopt them. The evergreens traditionally brought inside were soon decorated with apples, symbolizing the Garden of Eden. These apples would eventually become Christmas ornaments. And holly, a traditional midwinter decoration, was recast to represent Christ's crown of thorns. People already had their own agenda for this season. And that agenda was not one that was really radically changed when the names got changed uh, from non-Christian uh, to Christian names. The church pretty much had a policy of live and let live. If people would call themselves Christians and do lip service to the birth of the Savior, then let them do anything that they wanted to do with it. But on the other hand, by assigning the nativity to that time of year, the church really gave up the opportunity to control the way that celebration took place. The tension between piety and revelry at Christmas would reach its logical and extreme conclusion in Puritan England. When the holiday would be considered so unchristian, it was done away with altogether. 
More snack food tech on Modern Marvels tonight at 9 on the History Channel. And now back to Christmas Unwrapped here on the History Channel. By the Middle Ages, Christianity had largely replaced the old pagan religions of Europe. On December 25th, the faithful were called to Gothic cathedrals like Notre Dame and Salisbury Cathedral in England for Christ's Mass, soon to be called Christmas. But out in the streets, the holiday was still more raucous than religious. If you went to England around Christmas time, any time before, say, 1800, you'd probably feel pretty ill at ease. You wouldn't think it was Christmas at all. What would you think it was? Maybe Mardi Gras? Maybe New Year's Eve? Maybe Halloween? Because Christmas in old-time England was really a carnival. The houses of London were littered with brawling, drunken villagers and couples engaged in the most unholy activities. And each Christmas, a beggar or student was temporarily put in charge after being crowned the Lord of Misrule. The rest of the peasantry also got their once-a-year chance to grab power from the ruling classes. They would go around to the houses of the rich, or they would bang on the doors and demand entry, and once they were let in, the lord of the manor had to give them the best stuff that he had. He had to give them his best food, he had to give them his best beer, his best uh, uh, of everything. And it's jolly one day, it's then you shall be. But if he didn't, they would threaten or actually perform a trick. Come, butler, come, fill up. One surviving Christmas song says, if you don't give us what we want, then down will come butler, bowl, and all. But if you cross the bowl of the small, then down to the butler, bowl, and all. The rules of Christmas would soon change, however, as a wave of religious reform swept through England in the early 17th century. Led by Oliver Cromwell, the Puritans overthrew the king's forces in 1645 and vowed to rid England of all that was decadent. High on their list was English Christmas, and in 1652, they outlawed it altogether. Shops were ordered to stay open. Churches were forced to stay closed. The Puritans were always, I think, deeply attracted to those things that they were most opposed to. They had a fear that they might have too good of a time. I don't mean to trivialize them, but there was a deep fear that if these things were legalized, they themselves might enjoy them and their souls would be lost. The Puritans may have said good riddance to Christmas, but the people never really stopped celebrating it. The holiday merely went underground. If Christmas pie was illegal, it began to be known as mince pie instead, which was just as delicious. The deeper need for Christmas in the human heart, the need for celebration at a time of darkness, those needs made the battle against uh, uh, Christmas, uh, g gave it a few uh, uh, temporary wins, but it couldn't possibly secure a final victory. In 1656, the men of Kent and Canterbury passed a resolution saying that if they could not have their Christmas day, they would have the king back on his throne. They soon got their wish. The monarchy was restored with Charles II, and Christmas was restored with him. It seemed the English could live without a king, but not without Christmas. It has been argued that one reason for the restoration of the monarchy is because by restoring the monarchy, you also restored Christmas. You restored the proper English Christmas with its, its rituals, its traditions, and its carousing. Christmas is brought back, if you like, by popular acclaim. The fight against Christmas may have been lost in England, but the Puritans had high hopes for the new colonies in America. In 1620, a small group of separatists came ashore at Plymouth, Massachusetts. 
Even more orthodox than their English cousins, these men and women hope to rid themselves once and for all of the Christmas scourge. In 1659, Puritans in Boston followed their English brethren in outlawing Christmas. Anyone caught exhibiting the Christmas spirit was fined five shillings. Like in England, however, Christmas remained impossible to contain. The 1719 Boston Almanac doesn't list a Christmas holiday, but it does recommend that in late December you not let your children and servants run too much abroad at night. Not all the colonies had such trouble with Christmas. Captain John Smith, leader of the Jamestown settlement in Virginia, wrote that their first New World Christmas was kept with plenty of good oysters, wild fowl, and good bread. Jamestown settlers were also the first to drink eggnog as a Christmas drink, the nog coming from the word grog, which means any drink made with rum. After independence, however, all things English fell out of favor in America, Christmas included. In fact, on December 25th, 1789, the United States Congress sat in session and continued to stay open on Christmas Day for most of the next 67 years. At the same time, there are people who are writing in their diaries that, isn't it too bad we don't have any holidays? So after the revolution, here is an entire nation that uh, works hard, has forsaken many holidays, has given up many holidays because there were, there were holidays that were mandated by the crown. And it is time to start thinking about how to populate the calendar. As the 19th century dawned, Christmas would be one holiday that would pull the new nation together. But it wouldn't be the carnival Christmas of old England, nor would it be particularly religious. America would invent its very own Christmas, and in the process, reinvent it for the whole world. New York City, 1820. Within the space of a generation, New York had gone from a backwater port town to the center of American commerce. Great wealth came to a few during these years and moderate livings to the burgeoning middle class. But the Industrial Revolution had also created a class of the unemployed and unconnected, whose very existence threatened the cozy world of New York's middle rung. This was never more clear than at Christmas time. Class conflict was emerging with the earliest stages of industrial capitalism. And so what had previously just had an edge of menace, a little bit of trick, but much more goodwill, much more treat, now changed and the menace became increasingly obvious and increasingly serious. So that by the 1820s, the Christmas season in cities like New York was really a time of gang rioting, a really very, very nasty scene. So nasty, in fact, that in the year 1828, the New York City Council, for the first time, instituted a professional police force for the city as a direct result of a particularly savage Christmas season riot the year before. New York's upper class was worried. So worried that a few of them set out to change the way the holiday was celebrated. Washington Irving was America's best-selling novelist. And in 1819, he used his expertise to write Bracebridge Hall, an enormously popular series of stories about Christmas at an imaginary English manor house. Here, the classes mingled effortlessly as squires welcomed friendly and grateful peasants into their homes. And in 1843, England's most popular writer, Charles Dickens, tackled the Christmas problem with A Christmas Carol. It was a bestseller in London and America, and the lessons of the story struck a powerful chord on both sides of the Atlantic. 
Christmas Carol, I think, showed the Victorians what could be the use and the meaning of Christmas in a society which was quite pleased with itself in a way, but which nevertheless had fears about inequality, about too much materialism, about perhaps just too rapid change. There have been countless treatments of this Christmas classic, some in print and some on screen. This television version is from 1958, but the themes are straight out of the 19th century. Uh, you, uh, you want all day tomorrow, I suppose, Christian. Quite convenient, sir. Huh? It's not convenient. But it's only one day in the year, sir. A poor excuse to pick the pocket of your employer every 25th of December. I think the character of Ebenezer Scrooge taught a very important lesson to middle-class people. Christmas. Nonsense. Humbug. Because the Christmas season presented them with a real problem. What do we owe to the different people in our world? What do we owe to our families? What do we owe to our employees? What, we owe to the, what do we owe uh, to the anonymous poor? At first, Ebenezer Scrooge refuses to face those problems, but after his visions of Christmas past, present, and future, Scrooge learns that family and charity cannot be ignored at Christmas time. And Mrs. Cratchit, for you. My dear, that's for you. It really is a conversion story. I mean, it's a story about this hard-hearted man being reborn to Christmas observance. And I'm going to raise your salary and help your large family in every way possible. That conversion story is important for, for Victorians to be thinking about their own conversion to the holiday because it is very much that they are being reconverted so many of them had given up on the holiday so now they have to come to terms with their own reconnection with that and Scrooge is a way of doing that this is lovely story of Dickens going around America on one of his famous reading tours and uh, this American factory owner going to a, a reading of Christmas Carol and on the way home saying to his wife next year we shall close the factory on Christmas Day 19th century Americans were discovering Christmas after a 200 year drought of Puritan disapproval but the holiday would never have taken hold if society wasn't ready for it one important shift was occurring right inside the family itself before the 19th century, the family existed as what we might think of as an engine of discipline designed to train children to work hard. After 1820, 1830, the family was very quickly and perceptibly uh, becoming an, an agency that was designed to provide the emotional nursery for children so that they could grow up being sensitive little people and who took a lot of pleasure in the family and in the world itself. Christmas was tailor-made for this transition. Now there was a holiday where attention could be lavished on children without seeming to spoil them. The moment of Christmas where parents started to pay attention to their children. I sometimes come to think of this as the invention of quality time within the family. Parents would discover the joy that they could take out of watching the joy in their children's faces when they gave their children presents. Americans now knew why they were celebrating Christmas, but they didn't know exactly how to go about it. The old pagan revelry was clearly inappropriate for a Victorian home, but some ancient traditions were perfect for reviving. The Christmas tree has its roots in Germany, where decorated evergreens had always been a part of the winter celebrations. But the tree might have stayed there if not for the royal marriage in 1840 of Victoria, the Queen of England, to her cousin, Prince Albert of Germany. Albert brought his German ways to Windsor Palace, including the annual Christmas tree. In 1848, the London Illustrated News published this engraving of the royal family, standing by the first Christmas tree most English had ever seen. 
In just a few years, a decorated fur could be found in nearly every English home at Christmas. Carnac Hardware Limited now offers free paint mixing service. Bring in any color and we can mix it spot on. Or just to choose the color and finish you want from our wide selection of colors and we'll mix it while you wait. Now in stock, ceramic and mosaic tiles at affordable prices. Stop by and see us today. Carnac Hardware Limited, Main Street, Salem, Runaway Bay. Call us at 973-5525. Visit us today. It's J.E.N.S. Auto Sales Limited Pre-Christmas Special for six weeks only beginning November 7th. Get unbeatable prices on some of the used cars including Honda, Nissan, Suzuki, Toyota, Subaru and Mazda. We offer warranty and arrange financing, free fitness and licensing fee. Visit us at 29 Halfway Tree Road, Kingston 5 or call us at 968-8364 or 926-9628. Visit our website at www.jesautosales.com. The Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica is encouraging you to save energy this Christmas. Use fewer lights in your Christmas decorations. Instead, use reflective material to spread the glow. Switch to LED Christmas lights and use less electricity. Turn off the lights if you're leaving the house. And switch off the lighting display when you're closing your business for the day. Don't burn Christmas lights for more than five hours each day. Just turn them on after dark and don't leave them burning all night. Limit the lights and save energy this Christmas. A message from the PCJ, your energy advisor. Chanchester, silent hill, cowardly hill, small hill. Boss message from top now go normal. Silent hill, Chanchester, fans loyal. Tell them December 10th, in a star land of the big event. Badness, here it's boss, let's run this, proud of Brisbane, the Hanuel. South Park, December 10th, got the score on Silent hill, Chanchester, featuring the gold star, Stone Low, Bishop Escobar. Live performance by me, Bounty Killer. Alongside Grump for him to thank. And ordinary admission, 500. Jump out! Jump in on them chest. Shibata celebrates 10 years in theater with a wild new comedy, Michael Denton's Chickstar, directed by Lloyd Allen and Garfield Reed. You think it's here by your shoes to me? My hair! You sure? There's something wrong with my shoes? Hold on, Lee. What time is it? What's your time? The back of the Titanic. Opening Friday, December 16th at Crown Playhouse. 53 Melange Road. Next door, Olympia Crown Hotel, Kingston. Showtime is at 8 p.m. Michael Denton's Chick Star. Playing Friday to Sunday, 8 p.m. nightly. The first 10 persons each show night pay half price. Yeah, this is the Cotton Edge on RFM. All right, so we are trying to make a point with them to. Two different um, documentary, and we want to stop them because we want to tell you that if you listen to the first one, it tell you about the different origins of of the the, the Christian symbols, the, the, the Christmas symbol, not Christian symbols, the Christmas symbols. You know, where it originated from in Europe and all this. In the second one, show you the evolution of Christianity from Europe to America. And it evolved into where we know it now. So what we have is a, is a, is a, is a American version of Christianity after it was rejected in America for how much years. Also in England. And what it shows with the two things is that really and truly it has nothing to do with any man we born 2,000 years ago. That is the point we're trying to make. The point is that a lot of people religiously and really, really genuinely accept this idea that there's a man named Jesus Christ that was born on the 25th of December. When we know, and coming from what we heard, is that really what it turned into is a thing of family giving things to families. And Walipa partying and revelry and commercialization, commercialism. There's two things that are talk about. It's a talk about commercialism, it's a talk about the disconnection from Christ, and it's a talk about how 
the Americans them now turn it into a recognition of children thing. But them still interject something they name Santa Claus, which became more important than Jesus. And it's true. Santa Claus to children in Christmas is more important than Jesus. And that is strange. Now we come to African people now. What is it in those two documentaries? What have you heard in those two documentaries that connect you with your ancestral past, your African past? Nothing. There's nothing there that connect Chinese people to that. Nothing connects Indian people to that. All of it is coming from Europe. That is what you call European supremacy in religious beliefs as it relates to the Western world, as it relates to all people now is manipulated by this religion or this concept. Because there is nothing in those two different um, historical references that relate to Chinese people that related to African people, that related to Indian people, all of it, all of it is coming from Europeans. All of it. So it is really a European thing. And then now we look at it and say, why the hell are we as African people enslaved by this idea to the point where we say, if we do have it, we have to have something to substitute it for. We have to have something in place of it. Like the Americans. It's like Halloween. How the hell Jamaican people are celebrating Halloween and Thanksgiving? What the hell is happening? We know to say Halloween and Christmas come up and it's the same little madness. It's just like Christmas they are longer and it, it goes through so much different changes over the years. That sometimes we can't even recognize the problems that confront us because we take unto ourselves these ideas. We can't understand it. We can't understand how a group of people is manipulated by another group of people who is perpetuating their understanding, their culture, their reference point. And we there, so I go on like say, it don't make no difference. It don't make no difference. What do you think? What do you really think? We're going to open the phone line them. We're going to open the phone line them because, as we have said, we're not going to do this again for the rest of the, the year. But, you know, we usually do these things at this time of the year because we really have to do it over and over and over and over. We're not business if it look like nothing now, but we know, say, Real and truly, where we are do and where we know is not where them teach us. We come to this understanding because of digging out, digging out, digging out, digging out. And I just said, bring me to. I just said, bring me to, you know. And when we look upon what going to transpire over the next several days and we keep regurgitating it vomiting it drinking back the vomit vomiting it drinking back the vomit year in year in year out year in and black people black people right now in the western world get caught tonight more than white people because it would appear to me that them past that stage you know them pass a stage, you know. Ham sell more this time of year than any time of the year. Ham. Pork. Pork sell more. Oh, 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 we don't recognize all of them things, eh? Pork. A, 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 a meat that is despised in most places. In the Eastern world. Pig. 
whether you are Christian or Muslim, in the Western, in the Eastern world, you know, say, the majority of people in the world are Muslim. And that is a despising. And when we look for only for Christian people, no eat pork. It is Roman Catholic, you will. Because they don't ease up half or nothing. And as a matter of fact, a lot of the belief system we have as it relates to Jesus Christ is Rome give it. Just as all them give it this idea about Christmas. It's Rome. So all people are fighting against Rome, so not about the Pope and this and Pope and that. And them still are take part in it. Uh, the Bible tells us to come out of here. Come out of it. Come out. The system have we to a point of not recognizing that it has nothing to do with we. As African people, it has nothing to do with we. Listen to it and tell me which part of it, which part of it of Africa print tonight. Africa is the second largest continent. With all that we are going there, so what Africa have to do with it? What China have to do with it? Nothing. Nothing. But we sit every year, every year we continue it. And we wonder how the thing stayed away. The lie has become a truth to the one who is blind and who allow a one-eyed man to rule you. Because in the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. In the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. And he will forever be king. Because the blind cannot see that them going to a precipice. And some of will fall over the precipice already. And they will recognize it. We feel good. And we sing and dance right to the edge of the precipice. Yes. We love it. We feel good about it. It's a serious, serious thing, brethren and sisters who are listening to me. And we have to wake up. We have to wake up, man. We have to wake up. We have slept so long. Show me what in those two things where we play a while ago. What is it in that connect you to anything African? And everybody's supposed to connect. Everybody's supposed to connect to them ancestral land and the people them that them neighbors can connect to. You're supposed to connect to that. Tell me what in a those two documentary connect you to your ancestral land and your ancestors. I put it to you that there's nothing that connect you. Yet still, we take it upon ourselves every year to celebrate these European holidays that is used to cloud the mind. Them use the holidays them to cloud the mind. For me to feel say everything is okay. And we can't see through the mud. The question is, after listening to those two things, what in those two things you can truly say that what you believe in is related to any of those two things? To the Christian-minded person, if what is said on those two documentaries is true, and I believe it because it is their history and they are talking about their history. If all of that, what they're saying, the origin of the mistletoe, the origin of the Christmas tree, the origin of Santa Claus, and even the idea of how Christmas come about. If these people is telling you about their history, how the hell you view it as your history? And celebrate it with them. 
how can you hear somebody is straight? That is totally disconnected from anything in our history where you and your ancestors have experienced. And now you grab it up and hug it up like it's your history. And evil fight and die for it. And separate yourself from people who don't accept it. Because you have Christians who don't accept. Don't accept it. And they are ostracized because they don't accept it. There are people like me who don't accept it. And it's ostracized. And it's looked upon and frowned upon because we don't accept it. And a lot of the people them who frown upon people who don't accept it, don't know the history of what them is claiming them accept. And if you listen to that and you hear the history, and you still frown upon people like me, like I said, dear, whosoever not celebrate, I think Jehovah Witness not do it neither. Stand to be corrected. But you have denominations in a, in a Jamaica yeah, where don't celebrate that. Because them see it as something outside of what them truly believe in and them faith, which is Jesus Christ. They believe in a Jesus Christ and them know that they have nothing to do with them faith. And the majority of people, them almost like, well, you know, me come here, come see it. Me band, come see it. And this and that, and you know, it, the idea good for gifts and thing, and you know, it gives a sense of family structures and all them things. It's like we never have no family structure. It's like we never have no family structure. The Chinese have family structure. When you see them come together, them come together as Chinese people. And them recognize them family and them structure. No, nobody never go to them land and drag them out and carry them go to the next land and turn them in a slave. We add family structures. We add family structures. But it get wiped out. But now, we still, our mind still blurred. Our mind is still blurred. Because history does not treat us fairly because who write the history is the same people them who perpetuate the madness in our history. Them perpetuate the madness in our history and we know, we, we, we internalize it. We internalize it. So we don't know no other history but their history. I will grab up the history like, wow. It's a terrible thing. Terrible thing. Cutting edge. Hey, good evening, Moose. How are you doing, man? Blessed man, how are you doing? Well, I'm all right, Brett, you know. Just another, um, as you say, another holiday season. We will be celebrating the white man's Christmas, you know. And just a little background on the Christmas thing here. Um... You know, in ancient Greece, these people, when it was not wartime, in the cold time, these people, these Greece people used to celebrate, to drink their wine, eat their grapes, and eat all type of meat. But at the time, their celebration, they wasn't celebrating with women, they were celebrating with little boys, if you know what I mean. Why do you think that most angels is little boys, little babies? <laughs> I don't you know what call on that one. No, if you look at the angel, it's some little babies that are cupid and all them little angels with little bow and arrow and little wing. It's little children. It's children. And naked also. Yes, yes. And naked. Yes. yes. That is their culture. That is a Greek. The Christmas thing is white man Greek practice. And by the way, after the, the celebration of the family, they took that from African people celebrating um, coming together at the end of the year which we today we call Kwanzaa they took that no 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 Kwanzaa is so after I, Kwanzaa is after Bridget. Kwanzaa is Kwanzaa is not before Christmas I understand but I'm saying they call it Kwanzaa today 
But back in the days we used to, with the African, the Egyptians yeah. used to come together and celebrate their family. We call it Kwanzaa today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, remember, they copy all of our history and they turn it. Yeah, because they're trying to make it be the image of their, their image, you yeah. know. And then, as you say, we swallow up hook, hook, line, and sinker. Because we did, sink with, sink with. Exactly. They destroy our culture and build up theirs. And we gravitate to it because we do not know our history. Yeah, yeah. But the good thing is now, as I say, man, you know what, Mota, I, I never say to you before, but let me say to you now, man, um, I appreciate the work that you've been doing out there. I mean, a lot of brothers um, who are here in America, we listen to you. I mean, I'm I'm just one mostly on the phone, but you know, yeah, the other yeah, brothers yeah, listen yeah, to you yeah. and sisters too. Yeah, we we listen to you here, and we, you know, we give our comments and we talk. I was, again, as I say, I have a group of friends. Yeah. But we something. want to say thank you. Really, I'm tell you something. You see, the idea of we not knowing our history, this program, you know, where I do, all right, so mm-hmm. you know, not, that will not teach you our history, but I want to show you film history and show me mm-hmm. what in you know, a film history connect with oh with we as in the for instance now that those two documents you were just play a while ago it's film history. Now you mm-hmm. you have to looking at that now as an African person and say what is in those two and um documentary that connect to you as an African person. And I put it to you that there's nothing that connect us to what them said here, sir. So obviously, mm-hmm. we're supposed to reject it right away, you know. But you have, exactly. people, you have people who are listening to me now and I say, I'm going to talk about it. I'm to celebrate Jesus Christ Christmas. And say, After I'm done here, I'm going to finish with Christ, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm still going to tell you, say, well, right now, I'm going to go to the morning, I'm going to go to you know. My mother did not celebrate it. My grandmother did not celebrate it. So I'm going to talk about it. So then we but, the but the thing with people, you see, Muta, the thing is they don't do their homework. They don't do the investigation. Yeah. They just swallow everything what's been given to them. Yeah. And that's, that's the reason why our people are is in the position that we are right now. Right, no, because right. we believe the lie. They erase our history. And we believe the lie. I remember one time you were telling, you was on the radio, and I heard you saying that you gave a little girl a hunk. Which is the hope means um, yeah, yeah. The, the, that's life, the thing for life, life. life. the key for life. Yes. yes. And and this Jamaican ignorant ass man gonna tell you what kind of devil something them is. Fire, know? fire, and fire, and fire, and fire, fire, Regin. Fire! Oh yeah, my! She got, you she, see, that's a sh- she bought the ankh. She bought the ankh in my store as a pendant, <laughs> and she got to work with it. And the, the person who. Employer says that devil symbol. You must take it out and say, No, it's not a devil symbol. And then fire her. And you see, and look here, this is black doing this to black. Yeah. Before this man does his investigation to know what the is. Is that, is that Christian in the in the Watch out. Christian not doing no investigation about no ang. As far as them can yeah. it's a devil symbol. It's not yeah. doing no investigation about it. I, you know what, Mota, and talk about that, right? Okay, as I said one time, Lucifer, Lucifer is the ancient name, the ancient Roman name of the planet Venus. Devil, the word devil actually, you just put a D in front of the word evil, and you get the word devil. Devil is actually means devalue. Demon is just to demonize or to put down somebody's name. None of that stuff exists. That's all Roman, Roman. makeup name. After they copy, they know our history. They know about the laws of opposites. Remember the laws of opposites. We got positive and negative, right? Yeah. We got mountains and valleys. We got creatures in the water, creatures on land, night and day, man and woman. It's just the way the universe creates things. So these people knew the esoteric knowledge, and they know the exoteric knowledge, and they change it up and change up the teaching of the ancient black African people which we have put down on this planet. They have changed up the teaching and give us this line philosophy to control us and to make money off of us. Still I do it. And keep us in slavery. Still I do it, Reggie. Still I do it. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, and right now, they will hate men like me and you for telling them the truth. They will say, yo, we're out of our minds. And the fact that, to be honest with you, they've been out of their minds for many, many years. Mm-hmm. They still can't see right now. Okay, where is Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and God in slavery? Where was Jesus Christ when those nine people got shot uh, um, here in, um, in America, in um, um, uh, 
North, North Carolina. Where was when that boy, that Dylan Roof boy, killed those nine people who were worshiping Jesus Christ? The Bible even says, if wherever two or three are gathered, there I will be in the midst to bless and to do good. So please tell me, Jamaicans, Christians, how come you have not seen that yet? Yeah. How come God was not I in Jesus Christ? Yeah, was yeah, not yeah, in yeah, yeah, you must say, my defend himself. Good. Yeah, you would say, my defend himself. The one where God shot out the people, them not the church. Him say, my defend himself. Yeah. Yeah, man. And if you don't and mind, Sharp, you get to it, too. One more time, Mutter. Say that again. I said, if you don't mind, Sharp, him get to a fight, too. If you don't mind, Sharp, because I hope to know <laughs> a whole heap of police who kill black people get to a fight in you know, some little. Yes. Round the corner, we you know them way there. So you know, because it's all about white supremacy. Yes, yes. And instead of we black people working together, coming to Muta, I'm trying my very best. My professor right now, there's, uh, there's a professor that I have in Africa. He's trying his very best. His best is um, his son. We're trying our very best to bring the black family together. We're trying to teach. We hook up with men like you and other people here in America to to, to speak these things and to show. You know, the thing is, we over there arguing and fighting about black um, white supremacy, but yet we black people won't unite yet. Mm-hmm. We don't have to care about black uh, white supremacy. All we need to do is unite and begin to work together. Yeah. They teach us to separate from one another and fight against one another. Yeah. When the truth is, the truth is, I mean, we, I mean, we black people are, the, are the, the beings that God put all the generation of men and women out of. I don't know what to say to my people. Well, All brethren, I can do is we carry on. Give thanks to the car, brethren. Yeah, man, real time, brethren. Hey, yeah. you know what? Have a blessed holiday season. I'm not going to say no more Christmas. Have a blessed holiday season, man. We'll talk. Sunset Pharmacy, Whitehall Road, Negril. Across from Negril Bus Park, gives special discounts on all prescription, children, elderly, and optomics. Opening hours, Mondays to Thursdays, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Fridays, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Saturdays, and 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Sundays. We accept all major health, debit, and credit cards. Telephone number 957-4192. Listen up. Want to take a break from making sorrel this year? Yes, you can. Get in season sorrel juice. Real homemade sorrel with a tops of ginger. Just the way you like it. In season sorrel juice. Ignites. Kian done. Kingston, Jamaica. You asked for it, and now we give it to you. Better Home Depot, a world of building products. 76 Malines Road is now open to serve your hardware needs. Plumbing, cement, steel, paint, lumber, tiles, and more tiles. Better Home Depot is a world of building products. Open Sunday, visit us today, and get 5% discount on your purchase. Or call 923 Better Home Depot, a world of building products. And Need the Night Club and Magnum Tonic One presents Magnum Ladies Night. Every Thursday, ladies take charge and enjoy free Magnum before 12 midnight. Magnum Bucket Deals all night. Special guest DJ and Anita Squad every week. Hosted by DMX. Must be 18 years and older to drink. I need required. Drink responsibly. I love the way of the you're watching a new version for the version I present. I mean, it's a big wheel entertainment presents a thing called Top League. I don't know a place to be, Waves Beach, Negril. Featuring Movado, version. I don't know Friday, December 23rd. I don't know if Vanessa Bling is going to be there. Mr. Ruff, come up with a quest them, dog. Feed the girl them. Ah. Sexy in a shot, shot. Sexy in a dress store. I remember three thousand dollars at the gate. VIP five grand. And music by black schoolers. DJ Absolute. Damien Showtime. Hosted by Pretty Boy Flying. I don't know the girl them we represent for every time though. Shivana celebrates 10 years in theater with a wild new comedy, Michael Denton's Chickstar. Opening Friday, December 16th at Crown Playhouse, 53 Mullines Road, next door Olympia Crown Hotel, Kingston. Play Friday to Sunday, 8 p.m. nightly. The first 10 persons each show night pay half price. How is it that historians can tell you when certain kings born? And great men that lived like 3,000, 4,000 years ago. 
But them do have no birthday for Jesus Christ. Something is intrinsically wrong. Something is intrinsically wrong with the idea where the Bible mentions nothing about any date. People speculate about it. It's a serious thing. It's a question where we need to ask and get answered by Christian people. How come you don't know when Jesus was born? That is really serious. And you know when Caesar born. And you know when all the other people are born. Yes. Cutting edge. Yeah, cutting. Blessed man, how are you, man? Yeah, man, Kev, 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 Alibaba. Hey, man, I know you, man. Keep on saying Kev, Everybody, everybody must know your voice, by the way, you know. Yeah. You don't have to introduce yourself, man. Everybody know your voice, man. Thank you, man. Go on to you, listen to them. All right, you are, all right, go on. Say it again. Kev, Kev, Alibaba. Thank you. I'm not from the Brazilian town. When you come back to Jamaica, what are you going to say? Kev, who used to live in Alabama? When you come back to Jamaica, you're going to say, Kevul used to live in Alabama. No, well, yeah, well, them time there, you know. <laughs> but they had to take in a reason and thing, man. Yeah. You have a book that, too, where I tell you, I look on them pagan origins of the Christ myth. Yeah, me, yeah, I know that, but you used to sell that book there. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, and boy, I tell you, reveal some things, I tell you, reveal yeah, some things, yeah, man. man. And after you have all of these books and you have all of these documentaries, obviously people don't listen to it. That is why we play it, see, because we want some people listen to it. But my yeah. question, you know, I'm keep asking the question. If you listen mm-hmm. to that as an African person or as a Chinese mm-hmm. person, and you listen to that documentary of white people talking about the historical thing of Christmas, what is mm-hmm. it in that that connect you to that? What is uh, it as a uh, Chinese person would connect you to that? What is it as an African person would connect you to that? There's nothing that connects you to it. Nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Only we know say that you slavery that how we connect you to it to beaten. You know? Yes. And beaten in Africa. And of people, you know, say why well, I mean as I look for you know say up as well in America. I took them there in my workplace. Me, that was Santa, me, them attack, boy, you know. But Santa, I know them one. But Santa, I'm not talking about Jesus. They never hear the man say, them, them replace, you know, the first documentary, they replace Jesus with Santa Claus. So Santa Claus mm-hmm. is of more significance now to the children, them. You can't, have, you can't have Christmas without Santa. You can't have Christmas without Jesus. I don't know. Is that so, the one? I mean, you know, but Jamaican people have agreed with the boy. Well, you know, say, actually, nothing can really go so still because all the time be cool and so forth. But when well, a man says, like, I don't think I would want to call us that, then we teach him for a longer time. Watch your man. Santa Claus is a gay guy. And him is a pedophile. Yeah. Him lists a pure children him deal with is a pedophile. You know, to the people them where him have up in the bush there. Look upon them. As some, little, as some little short man, he might imagine say a picnic. Yeah, yeah. Santa Claus is gay. And him yeah. obese. And him obese. Hollywood come and build pan. Once Hollywood build pan, he's gone, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Terrible yeah, thing, man. So. Terrible thing. Yeah, it's coming mean, out to pay attention. But I see when he come on to stuff in our Bible, you know, because when he feel like herb die healing, you know, mm. and they heard the good. Nobody now work with that. Like no, the 50, all the 15 thought you heard about the, the, yeah, yeah, the, the island and yeah, stuff. Yeah, people are saying, oh, yeah, but I can tell you something now. You listen mm-hmm. to where them say all of the things them on the tree represent. Then that not, that not, that not, that not, and the music yeah, that too, and the standard. And when you bring the tree in your house, you are bringing the pagan god, Saturnia, yeah, where, where is a phallic symbol. You know what the phallic Saturn symbol is? A penis, yeah. you know? It's a penis. It would represent a penis. So what may I say? Yeah. All of them things there is, is where, where them would have, if we talk about eyes and them, I say, Obia. All of them mm-hmm. things is white magic. Where superstitiously make you believe, say, if you do them things there, there's some supernatural Santa Claus that will come with and deal with certain things. So all them are talk about our things. 
Like say, it no make no sense if we are talking about oil. You have oils that create a certain ambience and certain vibration. Uh -huh. Yeah, yes, you have man. oils that yes. do that. All of those things in them white world create certain vibration to them. So oh, we are taking it up mm -hmm. on ourselves. No, you think it's not going to work for we? It's going to work in the opposite direction for we. You see, you tell them something you meet are some hip white people. They mean to them eyes, I know. Yeah. They mean to the eyes and they mean to the thing that should them know the connection. Yeah, when well, you go up far enough, you're going to eye shop. The white people hold the shop, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see black man. He must tell us that food is this. Yeah. But when he's sick now, he must run up and down and lose yeah. his shadow. Yeah, man. No? Because he... He uses the eyes, I mean, I must tell us that he's going to have a name love in the eyes. Yeah. Then he's thinking that he's going to have congestion. Anything in other farm, then yeah, it clear up. Then I see with frankincense, Frank man. Frankincense, a good thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Black people feel like, like, like yours, man. <laughs> then, then, but then we read in the Bible site, then give baby Jesus, and them should have feel that. Right. Because you see them use all them bomb people, put it over people, and bomb people. They don't say, ah, frankincense can't drink. There was a time, oh, what I did something. In other time, uh -huh. in other time, when them hear about, you hear about, the Queen of Seba, Makeda. Yeah. In that damn time, yeah, like, yeah. you see, frankincense is more, that was one of the most precious things that you can find, you know. Frankincense. Yeah. Yeah, when you have frankincense, it's, you're rich, you know. It's like when you go, it's when you go to Lalibela. When I told you that Lalibela, we're going to the market and the people, them bargain with salt, you know. Salt, S A L T, them bargain with salt. Salt mm -hmm. is a commodity where can make you wealthy mm -hmm. and then bargain with it. No, frankincense. Any salt or what kind of salt? The salt, like when they're up, up in Africa, man, in Ethiopia. Them salt is like, oh. them get it out of the sea, them get it from rivers, and where them get it? Rock, oh. you know, like you have Himalayan salt in a Himalaya mountain. Okay, yeah, big you know, salt. Celtic salt, 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 yeah, them really, all right. So what I say now yeah. is that the 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 oils and the frankincense the frankincense was something very precious it's not about when people hear about frankincense you know it was like shut it off you know but frankincense is a very good substance it's like amber which is like frankincense it's like myrrh you know it's like mm -hmm. eucalyptus it's like Siege, yeah. like where the Indian, them, the Native American, them use no siege, right? Yeah. Like when you're going to them rituals and them, them place them, them are burn siege because there's certain, there's certain vibration and aura is presented in that yeah, yeah. Where these yeah, people, just like, where not these people come learn it from indigenous people, you know, and when mm -hmm. them take it now, and we now have it. Them demonize it when we have it, you know. And then them go make money and fight now. And then tell we say, uh, this and, and we they like, I hear that now. I say, bro, tell me, no, you're not punk. I love, I love, I love, I love, and this and this and that. Yeah, I love for the wrong reason. Terrible. Them have it to sell and make millions of fight. Yeah, man. We are, I love for the wrong reason. I just have a as you talk about frankincense, we have a book in front right now, me I look and it says it's known for uplifting spirit, improving attitude and also stimulate the immune system, relaxing muscles and managing inflammation. You know the same oil business. Yeah right? man, and you can't drink thing. it too. You can't drink it. Yeah, you have to get some. Anyway. Like, it's like, may I listen? May I listen to Jane? Yeah, you can talk about the, the aisles and early, the people and the scientists, the aisles, special stones and stuff, they carry a certain frequency, you know, mm. where in line with frequency of your heart, your car, your body electric. Remember, we are talking about the body electric. We come right, right around to that, to that certain frequency coming on music, where certain music relax mm. you, that mm. it plays at a certain music, where, where them call brainwave, where them call brave wave, yeah. brainwave length. Yeah, you just play at a certain, certain thing resonates, all like a precious stone, I have two precious stones. You sleep with them, you get a certain vibe, you, you understand? Yeah, but because there's yeah, you, see, you see, you see, certain, in a Europe, resonates a certain sequence, you know? In a Europe, you see, why you think uh, the aristocrats them never usually bathe often? 
Because them know so them have idols. Them get the oh, idols from the, the, the African, them, the Moors. Then Queen Elizabeth, I don't go twice a year, Queen Elizabeth be here. I'm not talking about this Queen Elizabeth, I know. I don't want nobody to get me wrong. I'm not talking about Queen Elizabeth the first. Queen okay. Elizabeth the first was known to be here twice per year. Right? And what keep the smell away was the different eyes that was coming in from India, China, and all of these North African places. Because wow, the North okay. African, them, and all these people, Chinese, India, they was into oils. See? Wow. So you have, certain, you have certain places in India where you can't, you're ready to have sex, you have to have certain oils ready. And you have to be have yeah, which burning. One? Which one? Which one? Which one of the aisles? What is the man? <laughs> oh, you get so excited. <laughs> 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 when, when, when you have certain, you have certain people, when I'm going to, in a certain vibration, you know, karmatic, karmatic vibration. Yeah, you, you burn your incense and your certain smell, and it arose certain yeah. frequency in you, and you develop a certain attitude. No. White people start to know these things, you know. But black people show it where? Yeah, black people show yeah, yeah. it where? Because it's you know, I'm going to go to I don't pray, we are praying, we are praying. It's not a joke business. Anyway, give thanks, Bridget. Give thanks. Yeah, man, give thanks. Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. Cutting edge. RFM. Go on and play this tune until the next call come. Listen to this tune, yeah. That's a man, memory lane, memory lane. When I hear the start with the let them say, yeah, yeah. we just remember when we got Kingston Speckle, 1968, reggae come out and a dance to that. Let yeah. them say as one of the early reggae tunes, studio yeah. one. Yeah, man, yeah, man. And, and, I, and I saw the feeling soul, and of course, from the Bob and the studio one, song book album, yeah, classic and, album, one of the greatest chained, albums and ever. Chained, and chained. And, Big yeah, one, Kill your man. Yeah. Yeah, man. One of the greatest uh, music albums ever. And big up to the man Bob and the, the genius songwriter yeah, and singer. Who I, who I spoke to yesterday, incidentally, as well as my brethren, Castro Brown. Oh, you talked to so, Bob and know. yesterday? Man, that talk. Yeah, man, yeah, man. We talked to Bob and yesterday, man. Yeah, yeah, give thanks, man. Give thanks. Yes, man, and also my brethren, Castro Brown. Yeah, yeah, man, for real. You know, so big up. We are going in England, or you want to tell the Lord. Well, yes, yeah. on Friday the 2nd, I had to take the recently appointed, the new Jamaica Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade to task, mm. Kamina Johnson-Smith. Yeah. Her father is Anthony Johnson, who was um, the High Commissioner here for the GNP some time ago. Mm. One of the things that I don't like about this senator thing is when people who are senators, not elected in elections by the voters, the people, mm. but who are appointed, you know, I see this as a gravy train thing, being given ministerial positions. Yeah. And this was further enforced, um, reinforced my feeling against senators, people not elected by the people to be given ministerial portfolios. Was when last Friday at the Jamaica High Commission, the second, I, after she spoke, in the question and answer reasoning part, mm. I said to her two things. I said, Portia Simpson said that Jamaica should become a republic and that she was making some moves. Of mm. course, P.J. Patterson before her said that. Yeah, yeah. And Johannes, since he won the election, has changed his position from saying that the economy, have to, we have to concentrate on getting the economy better, which is stalling tactics, delaying tactics. Because since then, since he has come in, I have read where Andrew Honest has said that Jamaica should become a republic. And yeah. yet she, this lawyer, young lawyer, yeah. Kamina Johnson-Smith, when I said that Jamaica needs to become a republic because we cannot be independent as you and I and others have said all the while and have a foreigner, a European, yeah. as a head of state of Jamaica whereby the governor general does not represent the yeah. people of Jamaica but represent Elizabeth II, the head of uh, and also her heirs and successors, yeah. etc. 
You know, right away her reaction was against that. So she's for the maintenance. What you say? What this. you say? What you say? What you say? Her thing is that, you know, Andrew Onis, the Prime Minister, said that um, that is not important. The most important thing is for the economy to get better. But I said to her, that is just an excuse. Because you can use that argument about the economy getting better to put off the fact that Jamaica must have a Jamaican as the head of state. Yeah. And I said, this is why Marcus Garvey said, emancipate yourself from mental slavery, none but ourselves can free our minds. Because you cannot be economically strong and self-sufficient if you have a slave mentality where you believe you cannot direct and control your own destiny. Then she tried to come back at me and said, well, there was um, some poll, some survey, where 62% of the people yeah, in so Jamaica said, so said, so, yes, yeah, said it was bad. So, so when I, so I, she thought she had me there, but I slammed her and said, the reason why that is so is because of Slave miseducation. Lack of you can't blame people who have been miseducated. And this is why you do what you do. I do what I do. We as Africans to so educate our people. Yeah. So I said what is needed is re-education to get rid of this slave mentality that some European must be our head of state, etc. Well, it's, like, it's, like, it's, it's like people that they say, Jesus Christ did bomb on the 25th of December. I raised who wouldn't learn it that we are there. Exactly. So, who, so who is me you now to come tell people that about that and that when we don't know so Jesus Christ by the 25th of December? And we, them don't really know it. I hear them here, so. Precisely. And, and now white people come tell them, say, I'm not sure. Jesus never born by the 25th of December. <laughs> Definitely. But this is. So, so, in, so instead of embracing what the PMP should have done and what the GLP should have done, if they were honest. In educating our people away from the slave mentality, mm. one thing, D don't want to do that. Want to be used in the fig leaf about concentrate on the economy. Are you going to concentrate on the economy? Because I said mental liberation goes along with economic liberation. They go hand in hand. Yeah. They're not mutually exclusive. You, you, don't have to stop one to do, you don't have to stop one for work on the other. You don't have to stop Pre one for work on the other. Precisely. Because yeah. they're not mutually exclusive. Yeah. But it just goes to show how some of these people are the very people holding back the yeah. independence so of she, African so, people so in she, Jamaica. So she don't know why most Jamaicans would have said, them want to hold on the Queen. She don't know why that should happen. So it's really because the people them don't know. But, but, but she well know, but, but you see, she's part of that order want to maintain yeah. that kind of mentality. And this is why I'm, I'm saying this publicly. So I denounce her for trying to make excuses mm. for maintaining this slave mentality that we must have. Elizabeth II, as the head of state, most Jamaicans, the people in Jamaica. Most Jamaicans don't know that the governor general wife is the first lady and not the prime minister wife. Yes. It's not the prime minister wife is the first lady of Jamaica, you know, it's the governor general wife. Most Jamaicans yes, don't know that. They, they, they don't know that. And this is why I'm saying it is deliberate, you know, it's, it's, it's a slave mentality. Then the, the, the next thing that I brought on to her was about the gun violence in Jamaica that impedes economic um, progress in Jamaica, whereby a lot of people in Jamaica yeah. and outside of Jamaica as Jamaicans are afraid to invest in Jamaica, live in Jamaica because of the gun violence. And I use as an example the, the gun violence in West Kingston, yeah, yeah. specifically Tivoli Garden, um, Denham Town, and that type of situation, and so on. And of course, Desmond Mackenzie, he's the MP, he's responsible as the representative, and Andrew Wonis as the Prime Minister, right? He should be visiting there to quell things and to work things out. But I use West Kingston to say, can you imagine West Kingston, which is a very small place, in terms of area, mm. 
and is part of the capital of Jamaica being beset by this rampant gun violence that does not bode good for Jamaicans mm. at home and abroad. Mm. She tried to, instead of addressing the, the, the fact that Andrew Hone is as the Prime Minister, Desmond Mackenzie as the MP for that constituency in West Kingston, should deal with that problem with the youths there, and, and because that's their responsibility, mm. and to do whatever is necessary. She was saying, well, it's not just West Kingston, it's all over Jamaica. I said that. I, I said that the rampant gun violence mm. who was about economic progress of people Jamaica. in Jamaica. So that's the whole country. Mm. And I merely cited West Kingston yeah. as the latest example. Right. And, and, and again, what it goes to show is that whenever you talk to these um, political appointees whose loyalty is to their party. They don't address what you are telling them about, you know. Mm. They're finding all kind of smoke screens and trying to evade. But it will not work, and this is why I have deliberately come to let you and others know how I had to take her to task. Yeah. Coming as Minister of Foreign Trade and Foreign Affairs. I mean, who is she? Who knows her? She has never faced our electorate. She's a senator, meaning that she was appointed. And I'm against this thing of senators being appointed to ministerial positions. It's a gravy train. Mm. Jobs for their friends. Yeah, well, don't worry about that going on. Yeah. All when them not yes. senator, them still are good. It is, it is, it is, it is, it's the same thing. And at this time of the year, what they call, the, the, these airline companies call high season, mm. where fares are the most expensive. You know the average price mm. for people wanting to come to Jamaica, from Britain to Jamaica, is a thousand pounds and more because yeah. it's December so-called high season. high season. That's really the price of two fares. Mm. It's a rip-off. Yeah. And, and, what, and it just brings back to mind oh, Omar Davis, sold the rich Heathrow slot to Richard Branson. Yeah. A slot that Virgin. would have been earning so much money well, we for Jamaica like, should no never have been sold. But we have no year line now, so that gone. Yes, right? like, and, 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 and then Bruce Golden, who, who but no, but even with that, they could have, Bruce Golden was wrong to sell here Jamaica, and even when the Air Jamaica pilot group wanted to buy, he declined, refused some selling them, and sold it to the Trinidadians, which was wrong. Yeah. The Air Jamaica pilots group wanted to buy it, and they were denied. Yeah. And even so, Omar Davis still should not have sold the Heathrow slot. And i tell you why. It is one of the most lucrative money-earning slots. In, 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 in aviation. Airport, yeah. Yeah, so all Jamaica would have had to have done to be earning money is to rent the slot to other airlines. Rent it. Yeah, yeah. Don't well, sell as, it. As, as rent you, it. As you talk about airline, you hear any rumor at all? I don't know. It's just a rumor here that there's a possibility that England will be be easing up on the idea of visas to England, you hear anything like that? <laughs> For quite a number of months, every now and then, oh, so you're hearing I have been here. I've been, been, been hearing that. Mm. But, but no official confirmation. But I know, I know, I, I, that's why I say it's a rumor I hear that. It, it, yes, England, yes, 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 that's what I'm saying. England that so far, might, it, 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 has, it has the, just the, been the it has thing. just been a rumor. Rumor, yeah. But where rumor, this yeah. is concerned, I think um, the best thing to do would be to ask Andrew, who is himself, no, to let him come them clear. Them now, I'll tell you nothing now right now. Anyway, we have to move our bridging. The bridging comes from program. We have to move. Okay, then, Muta. But I'm I, I, I glad to say that and thing and... Fireborn for British Airways and Virgin who combine 
to be charging our people expensive. Go, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on there. I'm not going to agree with you, no, Bridget, because them things, I'm going to take more for going to go if you want no, to come no, 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 well, if you well, want to come to England. No, no, no. Well, you have to disagree on that because the fear is too much. Where you, where you take for coming? No, Muta, that is not the point. When I say fire bond, yeah. is that them operating a thing whereby our people are being charged excessive okay. fear. Okay. And yeah. our people must boycott, must in, in the high season period, boycott do a boycott thing to force the fears down because okay. it's supply and demand. All we right, have to sir. make a stand. All right, sir. Give thanks. All right. Yes. That is it. Oh. Yes, give thanks. This is the cutting edge on RFM1. Give thanks to Jody. May I tell you? Eh? One last call. All right, go on. Oh. Jody, efficient this man. May I tell you? Jody, efficient, is you can't efficient no more. All right. One last call, she said. Yo. Wow. All right, I'm going to call. Jody, what up? Jody. All right, one last call, a joke. <laughs> uh, what? Is, is, is what? Is what? Is what I'm going to do? I'm going to well, I saw it go. We're not at no last call. <laughs> We're not at no last call. It's heat up. I don't really make it go so. You see, bro, I don't really put you in all. I don't know what I'm with them people. Yeah. Oh, oh, I mean, how many times you have to tell them that? I mean, it's not, it, you're not thinking that it's a, it's a normal thing. No, that man, take up him phone for talk on the radio. I don't just block off from the radio. Why do I hear himself and talk to somebody on the telephone on the radio? I mean... <laughs> A madness. It's a madness. Uh, it's just an ego thing. You want to hear yourself on the radio. Anyway, thank you, Jody. Yes, Jody. Give thanks. We want to thank Jody and we want to thank Romain, who was here, gone from 12 o'clock. We want to thank Vita from Me Hungry. And Me Chicks is in the building. Matrix is ready for him program. So, we'll be here again a little more from 2 to 5.45 with the Stepping Razor, the art of war. So, we are going with Babandi, you know. <laughs>